This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 28th, 2014. I'm Brian Hagan reporting. The Onion looks back at this week in history. On July 17th, 1980, Ronald Reagan accepted the nomination for president at the Republican National Convention in Detroit and delivered a speech in which he boldly promised that during his presidency, someone would body slam Andre the Giant. While admitting that the road would be long and hard and that it might take as long as seven years and two WrestleManias to get there, the former California governor vowed that under his administration, somebody, perhaps Ricky the Dragon Steamboat or a hulked up Hulk Hogan would grab hold of the 500 pound behemoth and send his massive body smashing to the mat. The Republican nominee also went on to promise that by the end of his first term, Joni would marry Chachi, hair metal would achieve mainstream airplay, and Shelley Long would successfully make the leap from television to film. This is the Onion News Network. It's Free Talk Live, and you can bring up whatever you want. All you have to do is dial toll-free to 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733 with you tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. So, live Saturday edition. We are, of course, here to take your calls about whatever might happen to be on your mind. Of course, we always bring stuff to the table for you to discuss with us, should you like. Big news, actually, coming out of uh, California court. Just, I literally saw this moments before we were uh, going to start the show, and then we can talk about uh, pick, a grandfather picking up the wrong child at school and how some people have been freaking out about that. USnews.com reporting a California appeals court has decided Thursday that some cell phone use while driving is legal. And of course, in a lot of states, using a cell phone while driving has been outlawed, and California is one of those states. However, Stephen Spriggs of Fresno successfully argued that he didn't deserve a $165 fine for violating a state law against using cell phones while driving. I wonder how much he paid in appeals fees. Go ahead. I don't know, but he said he was not using his phone for communication. Instead, he was using a map application to find a new route. It's interesting. Spriggs contends, this is the three-judge panel ruling that said, quote, he contends he did not violate the uh, state statute because he was not talking on the phone. We agree. Based on the statute's language, its legislative history, and subsequent legislative enactments, we conclude the statute means what it says. It prohibits a driver. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> Why are you laughing, Mike? You because I just, I, I'm um, so often I have seen um, people in law enforcement positions just kind of fit a square peg into a round hole and then, you know, with a law mm-hmm. and say, well, this is how we interpret it. And it's right. obvious that's not what it says. Now, I don't think the simple fact that some lying politicians in some state capital come out somewhere came up with some law makes that law legit. But at the very least, you would think that the people who are enforcing it would stick by the letter of the law. But they don't do that either. Right. Well, and sometimes even if a law is crystal clear, a court will interpret like the writing, the language of the law is crystal clear to you and I. A court will interpret it completely differently. But nonetheless, in this case, they uh, believe that it means what it says. It prohibits a driver only from holding a wireless telephone while conversing on it. Now, that's an interesting clarification, too, from the court, because how many people who have been uh, you know, pulled over and ticketed or using a cell phone while driving, we're actually using the phone feature on the phone, the actual telephone call feature on the phone. I guess if you're holding it up to your head, head, that's an indicator. But every time I've got the phone to my head, I'm not always on the phone. Sometimes I've got a Google Voice app. And so when people leave me a message, like frequently, Mark, you'll leave me a message or something, and I'll, I'll go and play a message back. 
the 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 speaker's just not powerful enough to to make it audible at a very far distance from me at all. So I will frequently pick the phone up, put it on the speakerphone mode or whatever, and actually have to hold the phone next to my ear to be able to listen to it, especially if I'm in a noisy environment uh, or something like that. So well, that's interesting. So if you were calling on the phone to get your voicemail, you clearly would be using the telephone, right? Yeah, you'd be interacting with it. But however, in this case, you are sort of interacting audibly with a feature of the little mini computer you call a cell phone, the little mini computer that is not actually There's no part human of the being telephony yeah, aspect right. of it. I'm not making a phone call. I'm just listening to a voicemail. So, But it's not even a voicemail exactly because you're listening to it through on online means. It's through an app, not through a phone, through the phone. Yeah, it's still voicemail. I it's mean, very. This is a very thin I'm slice of cheese. I'm playing an audio cheese. file. Yeah. Right? I'm playing an audio file back. Basically, when Google Voice records a uh, voicemail, it's it's something you can download as an MP3 or a WAV file. So I think this is an interesting loophole because the average person who receives this uh, this ticket, you know, some the cops just sit by the side of the road or sit on an overpass with a pair of binoculars, looking at people as they they pass by sure. to to uh, to pull people over for this. And so you know how it normally works. The cops spot somebody. They pull the person over. Well, I'm going to have to give you this ticket for being on the cell phone. Oh, I'm so sorry, officer. Don't give me the ticket. Please don't give me the ticket. And then you get the ticket or you don't. But in most cases, you're going to get the ticket. And most people are just going to go ahead and pay it. Well, most if people they, will most never people, read the statute itself. Well, if they if they were on the phone, they likely wouldn't. Uh, you know, there, there's nothing to read because you were guilty, right? So, and the chances are high. Yeah, but they have to prove that you were guilty. So, if part of the law is that they have to prove that you, if, the, if part of the law is that you're only prohibited from using phones if it is a phone call, then that means they have to prove you were on a phone call. Oh, really, officer? Well, I'll see you in court. Well, uh, let's see if you can prove that I was actually on the phone. In order to prove you were on the phone, they would could only do it two ways. One, have you admit it? Because that's how they get most people is people just blab and they dig themselves into a hole or they talk themselves into getting a ticket. Or two, they'll have to subpoena your phone company and find out, okay, well, I pulled this person over at 3.15 in that the afternoon. Instant, yeah. Were, was this person's phone account actually on a phone call at the time that I pulled them over? Well, it's um, it, it, it's all very interesting. I, um, you know, I don't talk on... I won't stick the phone to my head generally anyway. I try to. I prefer to have a little uh, headset, so you know that's supposed to be safer in some way. I don't think it is. The fact that you've got two hands on your wheel, on the wheel and your mind's uh, still occupied, it doesn't make you any better of a driver. So mm-hmm. I, I think that these laws kind of miss the point to some extent. Sure, they do. Well, I mean, they. The I get the idea. Like you don't want people dr- driving distracted, and that's kind of the intention. Yeah, of, I love that uh, idea of the law. But as a result, you end up restricting all kinds of things that probably shouldn't be restricted, and you end up hurting people who weren't in any kind of danger. But regardless, the decision from the Fifth Appellate District Court of Appeal overturned a previous ruling against Mr. Spriggs from the Fresno County Superior Court. California Attorney General Kamala Harris's office argued unsuccessfully for a more expansive interpretation of the state's 2008 anti-distracted driving law. The appeals court ruled the government's assertion, quote, that the statute bans all handheld use of wireless telephones while driving would, quote, lead to absurd results and is opposed to the legislative intent. So, unquote. Right now, we don't know whether or not they're going to be appealing to the California Supreme Court. But I think it's interesting because it it really, for anybody who's out there in California, now, I don't know what the court costs are in California, but I imagine court costs are involved in taking something like this. It sounds prohibitive already. To court. But you only have to pay court costs if you lose. So it would be interesting to see a test case on this of somebody holding a cell phone to their head. And I just, I'm sorry, I just remembered something. Have you ever seen the cookie phone? Oh, God. <laughs> it's, an iPhone, it's a cookie that looks like remarkably like an iPhone. Yeah. So there's this guy, oh gosh, I forget what his name is on, on uh, YouTube, who made several cookie phones. And he uh, would, he was actually driving on his real cell phone in Europe somewhere. And the cops would pull him over. And as the cop was approaching the car, he would stow his real phone out of sight, grab a cookie phone, 
And then he, he was just kind of holding it there, and the cops would come up to the window and accuse him of being on the cell phone. He'd look at the cop and look at the phone, and then he'd take a bite out of the phone right in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> he got out of the tickets. Um, yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> So just have a cookie phone with you at any time in the car. And <laughs> yeah, but then you have to eat a, a stale, stale cookie. cookie. Yeah. <laughs> well, are you willing to take a bite out of a stale cookie to avoid a $100 ticket? I don't know. I don't run into this problem. i got to say. Well, that's good. We live in New Hampshire where it's totally legal, which is why uh, you don't run into that problem here. Yeah. At least as right. I understand it, uh, it's legal to be on a cell phone in New Hampshire. So, but But this is good news for people, I think, in California and maybe in other places, although the you know, this decision is a California court decision. But look at the statutes. What what does the actual statute say in your area? Is it something that's a total prohibition on the use of any phone in any circumstance? Well, what about texting? I mean, this is... That's so dangerous. Well, it's absolutely dangerous. But, uh, for instance, if you're using this uh, this map app that he's talking about... Yeah. Now, if you're watching the map app, certainly that's not as dangerous as, uh, as entering in the destination that you mm-hmm. want to go to, you know, and hitting all the little buttons you've got to hit in order to get the, uh, the certain going and and all that stuff so that's kind of dangerous 855 450 free have you ever been harassed by the police for the cell phone use in a car have you ever beaten that ticket uh, you can share your thoughts with us here plus coming up a grandfather picks up the wrong student at school what happens we'll explain free talk live so i'm interested in getting some bitcoins well you could buy bitcoins with cash through a bank deposit but that's not anonymous think about it banks won't even let you wear a hat or sunglasses And they require a signed deposit slip, which catches your fingerprints by design, so any curious bureaucrat can monitor what you're doing. Yikes. So how do you buy Bitcoins while staying off the radar? you got to try MoneyPackTrader.com. MoneyPackTrader.com allows you to spend your cash at Walmart or almost any drugstore or convenience store, wearing anything you want without providing any identifying information, and then receive the Bitcoin safely. That sounds great, but what's the catch? There's no catch. Buying truly anonymous Bitcoins can be done in a day and at a reasonable price. Visit MoneyPackTrader.com to learn how to purchase as many Bitcoins as you want with real privacy. I'm going right now to MoneyPackTrader.com. That's M-O-N-E-Y-P-A-K-T-R-A-D-E-R.com. Hi, this is Mark Edge, host of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the very economic engine that powers this country. With a printing press tethered to Washington politicians bureaucrats, and central bankers, how can we put our trust in paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Come see gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold. With Washington, D.C. delivering more debt and printed promises, common sense tells us the future of the trend is obvious. Everyone listening should visit gold.freetalklive.com or call 877-357-9938. I trust Midas Resources for my gold, silver, platinum, and you can too. Again, I want you to have this book, and it's free. It's gold.freetalklive.com, or 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. 
Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com you can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and we're here on the live Saturday edition of the program. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855 450 Three seven three three. That's the Pro XPN toll free line, and you can join us on Skype as well. I don't think I mentioned that before. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Again, lrn.fm. Do send a contact request first before you call; otherwise, it won't work. So once you send that request, it will be approved. Not a problem. Uh, so contact us about whatever is on your mind. We were talking about uh, a California court decision, an appeals court in California, actually, that has made the decision that. You can only not be on your phone in your car if you're actually using the phone. If you are using the phone for a data purpose, then it's totally fine. So, um, although I don't wonder if they have a texting law in California. There's probably a as texting well. law, but uh, texting isn't the same as data. Texting is its own yeah. thing. It's SMS, right? Okay, yeah, it doesn't tend to count towards your data totals. That much is true, but it is data. I mean, you're sending data. Well, over so the phone. so is your voice on a digital phone. Yeah, that's true as well. Good point. I mean, if these are different <laughs> features of the mini computer that we all carry around right. in our pocket. Right. So we can continue with your calls and thoughts, and we'll do that here in a moment. We're going to uh, the Texas Bitcoin Conference in yeah. just a Few couple days. of days. Yeah, it's it's March 5th and 6th. If you're in the Austin area, you can come out and see us. It, uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. There's going to be all kinds of folks speaking at this event. Uh, if you don't know anything about Bitcoins and you want to find out more, this is the place to go, and you're in, in probably Texas at this point. It's going to be unlikely you're going to get your airfare all uh, set up. But there's going to be big names there. Jeffrey Tucker, Chris Odom, uh, Teresa Warmke, Stephanie Murphy, and Brian Sovereign, both uh, co-hosts here. Um, Adam Levine, Michael Goldsmith, Paul Snow. Uh, Stefan Molyneux is a big name. Jeffrey Tucker also. All these speakers, th there's there's going to be three tracks going over two days. They had to expand this because there was just so much interest in it. So they went mm. from one day to two days. And at any point, you're going to be able to choose between three speakers. I'm going to be emceeing at the event. We're, of course, going to be broadcasting. And it's there's going to be a hackathon. Also, if you haven't been to one of these events, there's lots of venture capitalists wandering around with their pockets full of money, Ooh. wanting to uh, to put deals together in the Bitcoin sphere. This is the this is the gold rush, uh, as far as our lifetime goes, or at least currently. TexasBitcoinConference.com. Like I said, March 5th and 6th in Austin. Get your tickets now. TexasBitcoinConference.com. To the phones and the fun. Patrick, listening in Virginia. You're on free talk. Hey, how you guys doing tonight? Hi, Patrick. Go ahead with your thoughts, sir. Oh, uh, well, I was just going to make a comment on the uh, texting. I know that we got a lot of that here. And, but I didn't know about the data. I, you know, I thought it would be like the equivalent to a drunk driver or something. You know, they should be really throwing the um, nails to them, you know, just like, uh, you know, if you get get fined or whatever drunk driver, I, I think. Should be it should be the same for texting too. Cause you think you think dangerous. texting is as dangerous as drunk driving? The evidence shows it is. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. man. I ride I ride a bicycle a lot, so I mean. Do you I have a driver's license? Car, oh, I, I 
see that stuff in cars all the time. Yeah, I see it a lot, I too. I, I sit at a window uh, when I'm working during the day, and I can see an intersection, a stop sign, kind of three-way intersection. And I frequently see people on their phones, frequently texting. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, doing. yeah, yeah. So I think I think once they start putting the foot down, I think they should take the nail nails to. What do you think? So what know, do you think is an appropriate punishment for someone who's texting while driving? Oh, I, I don't know. First time they probably give you like ten days. You know, ten days in, in jail? jail. Wow. Yeah, probably so. It's pretty hardcore. Do you think that's gonna? Probably say it's a misdemeanor, but but I'll be as a drunk driver now. It's hard to say. You know what you'd get, but I mean. Well, a lot of times drunk drivers, the first first go round, you don't spend that much time in jail, but you can certainly, you know, you can lose your well, license up to six months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That too, they could do that too. I mean, you know, you'd have to have some stipulations and really set down, set your foot down and get, and get these laws down too, you know? Now with the uh, drunk driving, when you get caught in a lot of states, they have the what they call the ignition interlock system. Uh, that they'll force you to install at your cost in your vehicle if you want to continue to drive. And then you have to blow into a tube every time uh, you want to start the car. And then also, I believe some of the systems allow uh, force you to blow into the tube while driving as well uh, to prove that you have not been imbibing while actually on the road. And uh, well, so what would you propose right. to uh, to prevent texters from continuing to text. Okay, so yeah, we know that you think you should put them in jail, but then what would stop them from texting into the future? Um, maybe some sort of rehab. <laughs> Thanks, Patrick, for the call tonight. I appreciate it. Oh, 855-450 free. I don't agree necessarily with what Patrick was suggesting, uh, but you're saying, Mark, that it is as dangerous as drunk. Uh, what I've driving. read, well, it depends on how drunk you are, right? Yeah. Um, so, you know, the legal limit is 0 0.08, mm -hmm. uh, legal threshold, I suppose is the term they use. Uh, 0 0.08 most places that I can think of. Uh, it used to be 0.1. Um, and, well, you know, <laughs> uh, it really it depends on the individual whether 0 0.08 is, is actually driving while you know, sort of intoxicated or whatever it might be. People have different thresholds of, of how intoxicated they are, what they call intoxicated, how, in, in fact, in, impaired they are. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Certainly, texters are darned impaired. Um, yeah, for sure. I mean, anytime you're taking your eyes off the road, you are in a very dangerous circumstance. But there's a lot of reasons why people take their eyes off the road while driving and, yeah. uh, you know, what they can include changing the radio station, which, of course, I highly recommend against, especially if you're listening to Free Talk Live. <laughs> uh, they can they can include arguing with someone like, you know, the kids in the back seat or your lover in the, uh, the passenger seat or whatever. So there are a lot of distracting things that can be done, eating something that you just got from a fast food joint, putting on makeup. I mean, there's all kinds of things that historically, pre-texting, have distracted drivers. And I think that distracted driving is an issue, and I don't know if jail is an appropriate solution for it, because I don't really believe that the punishment system of so-called justice actually does a very good job at prohibiting people from doing things in the future. I think there's some studies out there that show that it just doesn't work at, at doing that. Well... I mean, I, I think that you can, um, you, you know, carrots and sticks, um, incentives, they, they have, you know, they work. I think positive incentives often have a better, um, you know, better track record than negative incentives. But I, I think you can show that negative incentives work. Um, you know, it would seem to me incarceration doesn't make a lot of sense. But what about, uh, you know, taking away somebody's driver's license for a period of time? This is essentially what texting, the, the texting uh, tickets do is first they find you, then they'll take away your license and, you know, these kind of things. Uh, so if you keep on doing the same behavior, you know, at some point or another, it's also they have the opportunity to take a class. Perhaps uh, I know sp speeding classes you can take and, oh, it's dangerous to speed. And, you know, your first ticket every three years or whatever, you can get uh, knocked down if you take the class. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that's such BS. 
I mean, you know that's BS. Everybody going to that class knows it's BS. It's just some stupid make-work government class they force everybody to pay for. It's essentially just lining the pockets of whoever it is that the contractor is that's performing that class for the state. They just get person after person after person who's a forced customer for their business. They make up some BS curriculum about uh, how bad speeding is or texting is. And everybody, of course, who's in there is only there because they're forced to be there. I just want the cops to value li- the information. More coming up, 855 450 free it's free talk live it's that time of year again and you know what that means cold and flu season <coughs> but don't worry herbalhealer.com has you and your loved ones covered with our safe and natural products cold and flu fighters like beta glucans olive leaf antiviral capsules grapefruit seed extract hha for herb capsules elderberry power and respirate and don't forget about oregacillin for the lungs, normally $34.95, on sale now for only $25. Vitamin D3, 120-count soft gels, only $9. Whole body and homeopathic detoxes for the lungs, kidneys, liver, lymph, and brain, normally $26.95, now just $20. Herbalhealer.com also offers correspondence courses to teach you how to handle your health naturally. And as always, new customers get a free 128-page catalog with your order. Visit HerbalHealer.com and click the Winter Specials button to save on our natural cold and flu-fighting products. HerbalHealer.com, healing the world with nature, one person at a time, since 1988. Hi, I'm Derek J. I don't want a politician to represent me. To me... Government is the idea that one group of people can coerce everyone to comply with an edict or face increasing punishments up to and including death. Despite perhaps the most noble of intentions, the best government services are a far cry from what could be provided for by voluntary interactions. Besides, the people who call themselves the government wage wars and put peaceful people in jail for crimes involving no victims. If Starbucks used some of its money to drop bombs, I wouldn't shop there. So why would I support the American Empire? The Empire does not require my consent. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. That's VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. In every age, a technology is created that upends the foundations of society. The wheel, the printing press, the internet. Now, in a world sliding into financial chaos, a new technology is changing the way monetary systems work around the world. It is called Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a new form of money controlled not by banks, governments, or corporations, but through mutual commerce between free individuals. To learn more, visit WeUseCoins.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If you're looking for work, you know what I mean by elevator speech. It's the short version, saying just enough to make the listener want to listen more. Even if you're not a job seeker, effective communication skills have never been more important with money and attention so scarce now. So to cut through the clutter, choose every single word as though it was the last word the person you're speaking to will hear. Otherwise, it might be. Instead of saying, due to the fact that, say, because, and avoid mispronunciations. Say jewelry, not jewelry, which could offend. Undoubtedly, you don't want to say undoubtedly. And whatever you do, never use a preposition to end a sentence with. Just kidding. For more tips, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm.
Free Talk Live. Bring up anything right here, toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy all the features on our site. We've got archives, so if you've missed a moment of the show, you can download it for free right there. Just click and download. They're yours, and they go back for years, all totally free, freetalklive.com. Now, imagine being able to spend your Bitcoins with a credit card through a completely decentralized non-bank system. You swipe, and Bitcoin is removed from your wallet. It makes Bitcoin as easy to use as money in the meat space world. The technology would be pretty awesome, right? And if you think it would be worth investing in, you can go and see their Indiegogo campaign at mybtc.cc. That's mybtc.cc. And if you're at the Texas Bitcoin Conference, you'll be able to meet the creator of mybtc.cc. Uh, can we talk about who he is yet? Sure. It's Temper. You've heard him call the show a bunch of times. He's going to be down there in Austin, so make sure you say hello to him uh, down there, and I'm sure we'll be talking to him on the radio since we'll be broadcasting live. MyBTC.cc. For more information, we go to the phones and to your thoughts. Mickey is on the line listening in Huntsville, Alabama to WBHP. Hey, Mickey. Hey there. Hey, yeah, what's... I was listening to what you were talking about, and I'm the type of person I don't believe in double standards. Now, down here at HPD, I see them all the time come, uh, going around driving and playing with their little laptops while they're driving. Sure. Yeah. I see them on, on their phones and probably talking to the girlfriends that their wives don't know they have. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and they do uh, whatever else they want to do like that, too, texting or anything you want to do. Well, you know, I'm not going to have somebody tell me that I can't do this, I can't do that when they're doing it. Well, they're the professionals, Mickey. They're they're professionals. Well, that piece of metal they wear on their shirt don't make them a professional to me. Mm. A professional idiot, maybe, but that's it. Is it illegal in in, uh, Huntsville or Alabama to to drive while texting or drive while on the phone? Yeah, yeah, they they passed that, but I see people doing it anyway, and I always do. I do whatever I want, too. See, no, that's just how it is. The punishment team. stuff doesn't work. And people just do what they want to do. Oh. And if they get caught, then they deal with it then and they don't change. They really probably won't change their habits except to maybe be more careful and look out for cops before they do that stuff. Yeah, I mean, you, you just makes you mad, man. You know, I mean, who these people think they are, man? You're human beings just, just like the rest of us. They ain't no better than any of the rest of us. So who do they think they are? Man? I mean, I'm with you, Mickey. I get you. Thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it at 855 free. As far as I'm concerned, people should be responsible for their actions. Um, the The fact is, is that it can be very difficult to hold law enforcement officers uh, responsible for their actions. Uh, they know how to, to work the system far better. They've got the, the union reps and, and the whole deal. Um, I the, the questions I have is in dealing with dangerous people on the road, sometimes it can be difficult to hold people to a, a certain uh, standard. And with the traffic laws as they exist, let's not forget that the government, sadly, is in charge of the roads. Now, mm-hmm. I, I, you know, I, I don't think that that necessarily should be the way things are, but we don't have competitive road companies today, so it's difficult to say, how, would, how do we work in this world? And I don't know the answer. I, I know Here's what I know. We're all just trying to figure out what to do with the deck chairs until the Google car comes along in the next five years and solves all these problems for us. Man, I don't know if that Google car can navigate these awful, god-awful roads up here in New Hampshire. Uh, We were just, uh, not you, Mark, but a bunch of activists went to do a move-in today. Talk more about that later. But I was shocked at how bad the roads were on the way out there. I had just, um, like, a couple points my car scraped along the ground just because of the uneven pavement and just the dips and the cracks. And it's terrible. (laughs) It's just awful. Yeah, well, you probably won't care as much what, I mean, they can can go more slowly if the uh, terrain's bad and they... Uh, you won't care as much if you don't have to be paying attention to driving. You know, if you're just sitting mm-hmm. in there and you're all around the little table playing uh, pachinko or whatever yeah. it is that you're doing, well, who cares? Let's go to the phones and to continue with your thoughts. Kyle is listening in Oakland, California. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, Kyle. Hello. Hey. Um, well, I uh, remember a Mythbusters show back when they first started their series. Where they did a talking on the cell phone and drunk driving comparison and oh, yeah? talking on the cell phone. Talking on the cell phone lost 
every time, even the drunk driving. And what does and that mean? It lost. What What do you mean? It lost. <laughs> It means that every, they're trying to disprove the myth that talking on the cell phone was as bad as being drunk dry, and driving. And it turned out that every time it was worse hmm. than being drunk while driving. Wow. And this surely has to time, this has to hinge on the amount of alcohol we're talking about. Well, surely I've had more. Can you do me a favor, Kyle? I'm sorry. we got a, a real bad connection. Can you, driving their cars into me. Can you back they're off your phone by like an inch? You're very, very oh, sure. loud. It's very hard to understand uh, you. Um, I've had more incidents in the past 15 years with people driving their cars and coming very close to crashing at me. If I was as non-alert as they were talking on my phone, we would have had an accident. And how dare you not be able to put down your crack pipe long enough for you to get from point A to point B and not risk other people's safety. You want to risk your own safety? No problem. Don't risk my health and well-being. You can stand up for yourself in the end after you have the accident and say, oh, I'm sorry, I was talking on my cell phone. I'm still the one, or maybe both of us are ones, broken and in pieces because of the damage done while you were talking on your cell phone or texting or what have you. And that's where the gall of it comes in is how dare you think that you have the right to hurt me or hinder my point A to point B travels because you couldn't wait until you got home or wherever it was you were going to talk on the phone and contact people. We did just so let me fine ask you doing this. that. Let me, let, let, cell phones. What did we do then? Uh, we waited till we got home. Indeed. So let me ask you this. The legal system as it operates today seems to operate complaint completely based on punishments. Do you have an idea for how to uh, prevent this cell phone talking? Because you're not talking about what most states have a law against, which is putting a phone against your head. You're talking about chatting to people, whether it's a headset or not, right? No, hands-free is fine. Cause, you know, basically with that hands one free hand, is fine? it's more distracting. Well, it's better than nothing. I mean, really, you shouldn't be able to you shouldn't be able to use a device while you drive. It's okay if you're reading a newspaper because I I ride a bicycle also, but I do have a driver's license and cars, multiple cars. So uh, anyway, Punishment. I've seen people when I was riding my bicycle on Howard Street in San Francisco one time. I had a gentleman reading a newspaper while driving down the street, and I pointed it out to him, and he had the nerve. He had the nerve to laugh, kind of, and and. And tell me to fuck off. Oh, you can't no, say that on the radio. Say that, we got to let you go, man. Sorry, we're doing a radio show. I know that... It's a uh, very angry bicyclist there. Yeah, he's frustrated. <laughs> well, I mean, I get it. I get the frustration. He said that apparently the man uh, with the newspaper that he saw while biking... Uh, the, the man driving while reading a newspaper who apparently told him to F off. So for those of you, we had to dump that call uh, due to that. But uh, we are doing a radio show. We're on over 140 radio stations coast to coast. Uh, Here's so a little surprise like for you folks. You can't say that on the radio. Yeah, we can't do that <laughs> stuff. If, it were, if we were an internet-only show, then we could let you get away with that, but uh, we can't do that. So um, I get the frustration, though. I, I get it. Like, well, the problem is that uh, we're human beings, right? And human beings aren't computers. We're not perfect all of the time. Mm-hmm. We make bad decisions. We make mistakes. And it can be very frustrating when you're not in that mistake-making mode, when you see somebody else making the mistakes, and you just that's your only experience with that person, is that's a mistake-maker, a dangerous mistake-maker, and we should do something bad to that person in mm-hmm. order to prevent them from doing it. Well, we never got to his... He never answered your question. Well, he's, never, he's not going to answer my yeah. question, because there isn't an answer to my question. What do you do with the person you catch, uh, you know, reading the newspaper? You know, they're going to give him a fine is the answer, and he's going to pay the fine. And he's What's either, that do? And he's either going to read the newspaper in the future or he's you not. Send him to a remedial no newspaper reading course. <laughs> I don't know the answer. Um, I think when it comes to uh, the, the you know when it comes to texting, you really got to talk to your kids because they're the ones uh, you know they're they're the doing the texting world, and you got to say, look, when it comes to driving. You just leave it in the glove compartment until you get where you're going. But in order to do that, you need to do the same thing in front of your kids. You, you need to be the change you want to see in the world, and it's only going to be with this generation. We'll come back with more. Your thoughts welcome at 855-450-FREE. This is Free Talk Live. 
Nobel Prize was awarded for a medical discovery that improves your sexual performance? It's true. Nitric oxide was discovered to improve your sexual performance. It also miraculously improves your heart health, blood pressure, energy levels, your immune system, diabetes, arthritis pain, even your memory and mood. That's why millions of men and women have begun taking nitric oxide boosters as daily supplements. And right now, we're releasing free bottles of peak nitric oxide so you can discover the benefits for yourself. Be one of the first 100 callers at 1- 1-800-941-9498. After extensive research and clinical tests, nitric oxide has been described as the miracle molecule of the 21st century. Taken once a day, you'll not only begin feeling years younger, but we'll also send you free test strips to prove it works. Discover how to get your free bottle of peak nitric oxide and free test strips at 1-800-941-9498. Be one of the first 100 callers. 1-800-941-9498. Does advertising on the Genesis Communications radio network actually bring positive results? Let's ask Thomas Baldrick from Freeze Dry Guy. And do the GCN listeners let you know they heard your ad? Customers do let us know they've heard Freeze Dry Guy ads on GCN. Uh, They seem to be very loyal listeners to GCN. And they stay with those shows, and subsequently they stay with our business, too. Looking for positive results? Contact Lee Wickenhauser at 877-996-4327, extension 107. I'm David Crudeni, President and CEO of Cigna. We're proud to support the March of Dimes by walking in the March for Babies. It feels great to know that the money we raise funds life-saving research and programs that improve the health of babies. With your help, we can make this year better than ever. Join Cigna and our coworkers across the country in March for Babies to help more moms have full-term pregnancies and healthier babies. Start your team today at marchforbabies.org and march to help our babies. Thank you. Free Talk Live. It's not just zoning rules. It's everything. It's true. It's everything. It's, there's, there's so, many, so rules. many laws. You can't possibly know them. It's physically an impossibility to know the laws. You know not to hurt other people. I don't need a law telling me to do that. But the rest of them? Totally inaccessible. <laughs> it's true. It's written in legalese. If you don't have training in reading that crap, it might as well be a foreign language. Mm. And as you pointed out, it doesn't matter if you can read it. I thought I had them dead to rights. And <laughs> these bureaucrats, <laughs> they just, they just like, no, we do whatever we want here at the zoning board. Yeah, that's right. And you'll kiss our butts. Peon. Surf. You'll, <laughs> you'll slave. Do, you'll do what we say. Yeah. Why label them citizens? Oh. Why not just call it what it is? You're a surf. You're a slave. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done. Get a great deal. And a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program here. We'll take your calls about anything you want. 855-450-FREE. That's 855 855- Four five zero three seven three three, and that is the Pro XPN toll free line. If you care about online privacy, you really need to look into Pro XPN. It is a global virtual private network, and their software, which you can download for Windows, Mac, iOS, or Android devices, their software encrypts your data, and it makes it so that uh, you are sending your data over the internet. You're sending it still on the same public internet you normally use. It's just that your internet service provider can no longer snoop on you, which is what they're likely doing right now 
If you're not using Pro XPN, your current ISP is probably recording every website you visit, every search term that you enter. And keeping that stuff for years. For as many as five years in some cases, yeah. So you can stop that from happening right now by going to proxpn.com slash FTL and grab the app. Now, there's a way to make the Linux uh, users, if you're a Linux user, you can still use Pro XPN. But it's a little bit different. But uh, So go to proxpn.com slash FTL. Get started there. There's a free account. You can just jump right in and, and try it out tonight. And then when you're ready to upgrade to premium to get unlimited bandwidth, as well as no limitations on, like, for instance, you can do private torrenting. So there's no limitation on the things that you can do with the account. Though we recommend you connect to their Netherlands server if you're going to be doing private torrenting. Uh, because they do have some U.S.-based servers, but... Uh, again, just to be safe on the super, super safe private side, connect to their Netherlands server with your premium account on Pro XPN if you're doing private torrenting. Uh, also, Pro XPN protects you from people knowing where you are online. When you're using their service, it looks to the website you're visiting like you're coming from the Pro XPN server, not your actual location. And they'll get you around internet blocks. Maybe you're at a coffee shop or a school or a workplace where certain things aren't allowed to be accessed through their internet connection, well, you can defeat that by using ProXPN because they essentially create a encrypted tunnel to their servers, and there's no restrictions there. So ProXPN.com slash FTL. Go grab the app and use our discount code when you're ready to buy for 20% off for the lifetime of the account. The code is FTL20. That's FTL20 at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Plus, they take Bitcoin. And if you pay with Bitcoin in the annual plan, you uh, get a 33% discount, so you'll save even more. But even if you're just using the FTL20 code for cash buyers, you'll get the price down to $5 a month if you go with the annual plan. And that's a hell of a deal for great privacy protections. ProXPN.com slash FTL. Code FTL20, and there's a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, so you've got nothing to lose but your privacy. Let's go to Tyrone in Georgia. You're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, Tyrone. Hey, uh, Ian and Mark. <clears throat> go ahead I with your thoughts. Hey, I want to just, uh, just um, change the subject for, uh, for a second. Sure. Um, the, uh, the law that was proposed in Arizona uh, where people discriminate against uh, gay people from coming in the establishment. Um, I'm under the impression that uh, if someone doesn't want you in their business, it would be best that you not go in their business. And I, and, and I, and I say it because, Ooh, Tyrone, uh, I'll you know, tell you what. We've got you on a bad uh, cell or something's going wrong with your phone. I want to get to you, but hang on. I'm going to give the, the, the phone a moment to clear up. We're going to try Tyrone back uh, in just a bit because I think that's an interesting discussion, and I want to make sure we have it where we can understand it. Right. Uh, so we'll get back to that. Uh, just a little bit more information from the California story. I didn't get to this part of the story yet, but the California story, the Supreme, not excuse me, not Supreme Court, Court of Appeals in uh, California has ruled that if you are using a cell phone while driving for the purposes of using a map, it's totally fine. What they're saying is banned is using a cell phone for the purposes of talking to or, or for communicating with another human being. And so in this case, you're just using the map function on the phone. They say that's totally fine. So that's huge. It's a huge deal, I think, because most people don't know what the law actually says. When they get charged with things like this, they just go ahead and pay the fine. They don't actually take the time to read the statute. This guy apparently did, and he went ahead and, uh, and took this to the appeals court, and he won. So good for him. But Mothers Against Drunk Driving has uh, something to say about this. Their founder, Candace Leitner, from, and I presume that's of the national organization. She's also the president of Traffic Safety Advocacy Group, We Save Lives. She says, it's an incredibly irresponsible ruling. It may be legal, but it's still dangerous. All of a sudden now, people are going to think twice and perhaps not be as serious as they should even though the problem is getting worse and not better. Well, this guy was using a mapping function on his phone. Mm -hmm. Is she suggesting that holding a, a mm -hmm. computer device that has a mapping function on it in your hand... Saying that's dangerous. ...is worse than having a computer device with a mapping function stuck up on your windshield? Because that's where most people have them. Some cars have them built right in. We don't know if it's worse. She may, she may oppose using a GPS device. Who knows? 
She may very well. Um, this is, it, you know, it's it's very interesting. But you, you kind of ask yourself, well, is it safe to look at signs rather than looking at the at road? The road yeah. I mean, if you should be vigilantly looking at the road at every instant, should you not then, therefore, be looking at road signs? Mm-hmm. But, yeah, sure. Whether it's road signs or billboards, there's all kinds of things to look. Or pretty lady on the side of the road. There's all kinds of things well, to look at. I I shudder to think how many accidents have been uh, been caused by someone attractive walking along the side of the road. So she's upset about it. She says that people often claim they weren't sending uh, text messages when nabbed by the police. She says, it's like saying I only had two beers, the old drunk driving thing. By the way, uh, this I, I believe MAD has come out against the .08 alcohol limit and is now going for a .06. Oh, God. <laughs> There, there's not enough arrests. We need more arrests. <laughs> well, that, that, that's the idea is that the solution here is more arrests. And I I tend to think it's not arrests well, that are, are the solution. Well, it's interesting what she says here in this story is she claims that the problem is getting worse and not better. The very last part of one of her lines is uh, she says people aren't going to think twice. They won't be as serious as they should, even though the problem is getting worse and not better. Is that an admission from her that prior to this court decision, things were getting worse as far as people texting? That you know, even though there are all these laws out there that are supposedly prohibiting texting and conversations while driving, that it hasn't stopped. And in point of fact, things are getting worse. That seems to be what she's saying here. Is that your interpretation of that statement? Because that's what that's how I see that. I, I find it, th- this a very difficult conundrum. If there is a legitimate use for the com- small computer device that I carry along with me that's called that we call cell phones, uh, because you know a smartphone. If there's a legitimate use for a smartphone, it's a mapping function. Now I can totally see why there's uh, it's, it sounds like parsing hairs that I'm updating my Facebook status and not sending a text. Like both of those are equally dangerous activities oh, yeah. in my. In my opinion, um, it the fact that I'm not using the SMS function on the phone, but I am using the computer function, brings up you know sort of an interesting legal question. But it to me, there is no moral question there. Um, they're both putting people in danger, and I find them unacceptable. But when I mean, I have to my my cell phone needs to be stuck to my windshield. For the for me to use the mapping function is that the idea I can't hold it up because I've actually held my cell phone up with my two thumbs with my hands at with one and eleven so that I could look at that while I kept while you could still somewhat I, see the road. Yeah, I mean you yeah. know focus back and forth um, for the road. I'm, right. I'm you know as as close as I can possibly be to watching the road yep. and looking at my cell phone at the same time. I think I, that's the most re- if you're going to do it that's the most responsible way to do it. Anything well, that takes your eyes off the It's the same thing as sticking a a, a, yep. a, a mapping function. Well, she didn't a GPS say anything your, about. She didn't say anything about the. You know, uh, GPS, etc. But well, she did. She commented on the ruling, and the ruling yeah. says that this guy, it was cool for this guy to use the mapping function on his phone. Well, spokesman for California Highway Patrol, which was the agency that ticketed the man in the case, told the San Jose Mercury News, "Quote: We'll continue our enforcement the way we do it." Unquote, <laughs> suggesting drivers won't be able to automatically dodge a ticket by claiming they were looking at a map. Which, of course, I mean, of course, they're going to do it that way because they just want the money. They want you to. They want to cash in on uh, you, and they know that you are more likely to just go ahead and do what you're told and pay the fine. Even if you really were looking at a map, most people are just going to go ahead and pay the fine anyway because they won't know about this case. They won't know the details. They won't bother to read the law. But one of the reasons why I brought this up is I think it's important. It's one of those. Well, it's good news, first of all. But secondly, it. I think there's a. I want to encourage people to look. If you get charged with something and you've thought about not taking the plea deal, first thing you should do is just read the statute. I know it's god awful most of the time reading this stuff. It's it's very frustrating to read legalese, government statutes. But you never know what you're actually going to find when you take the time to read over the charging statute what is it exactly that they are claiming you did and can they actually prove it and when you read the statute it'll give you the list of the things that they are supposed to prove in court beyond a shadow of a doubt uh that that you actually did so in this case they would have to prove you were on the phone if you're in california and you get a ticket for talking on the phone while driving they will have to prove it if you go to court Mm. so uh 855 450 free of course, again, what the court costs costs in California, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. Just because they have to prove it doesn't mean they'll prove it very well. And even if they semi-prove it, that may be enough for a judge. So you never know.
you never know how it's going to go in court. But it's, I think, worth the effort to go ahead and not take a plea deal. We're going to try Tyrone back here in hour number two. Uh, if he comes back, he just dropped off the line. More on the way. You take control. It's Free Talk Live. Now, here's something you don't hear on the radio every day. Someone who can't see. I am totally blind. So I go through periods when I'm unable to sleep at night. And I feel like I'm constantly running, but can never quite catch up. But this isn't a sleep problem. It's something called non-24 hour disorder. Learn more about non-24 by calling 855-856-2424 or visiting learnmorenon24.com. If you've got aches and pain and soreness, it could be chronic inflammation. Listen to Dave talk about Relief Factor 4. I was in a sawmill accident and suffered with pain and discomfort for 60 years. I heard about Relief Factor 4 and decided to order it. And in four days, I was walking without a limp and without pain. I am thrilled. For more information or to order Relief Factor 4, go online at relieffactor4.com. That's relieffactor4.com. Are you looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear? ManVentureOutpost.com carries the name brands you want at the lowest prices. Ammunition, knives, firearm accessories, archery, air guns, scopes, binoculars, laser sights, tactical flashlights, fish finders, and boating equipment. ManVentureOutpost.com is family owned and has the lowest prices. Go check it for yourself. Get it quick. Get it from ManVentureOutpost.com. Now buy firearms at ManVentureOutpost.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. Radio VR. Good morning and welcome to Radio VR. We're broadcasting live from Washington, D.C. and around the world on voiceofrussia.com. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Today is Friday, February 28th, 2014. Radio VR News. President Obama has launched an initiative to reach out to young minority men, insisting too many still drop out, get in trouble, and go to jail. White House correspondent Mark Smith reports. The president often tells young black men he was once like them. I made bad choices. I got high. But he was lucky with a loving mom and teachers who cared. So many inner city kids aren't and end up in poverty and crime. And the worst part is we've become numb to these statistics. So Obama's starting My Brother's Keeper, enlisting charities, companies, and others. To give more young Americans the support they need. In the East Room, he was introduced by Christian Champagne from Chicago, who said hearing Obama say he has promise was life-changing. Through his eyes, I've been able to see... See that potential in me. Mark Smith at the White House. Vermont Independent Senator Bernie Sanders is not happy about a bill to help veterans that is now blocked in the Senate. Correspondent Jerry Bodlander has the details. The $21 billion measure aimed to expand education, job training, and other benefits for veterans, as well as make more of them eligible for care at government hospitals. But Republicans prevented the measure from clearing a procedural hurdle, unhappy about cost, and because they weren't allowed a vote on adding new sanctions against Iran. Vermont Senator Bernard Sanders railed against the GOP. This legislation is about supporting veterans pure and simple. Republicans say they want to help veterans, but also want to keep an eye on spending. Jerry Bodlander, Capitol Hill. California Senator is asking federal health investigators to review what has caused a sudden polio-like paralysis in about 20 children in the state. Correspondent Jackie Quinn has the latest. California Senator Barbara Boxer's written to the head of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention saying we need answers about the cause of polio-like paralysis affecting about 20 children in the past year and a half. 
Boxer wants an investigation into whether the illness can be traced to a virus or environmental factors. While the CDC explores the request, one agency health educator says the cases of acute flaccid paralysis are within a normal rate for the population. There's no indication the cases are linked. Most of the children have not recovered the use of their limbs. I'm Jackie Quinn. Controversy about what a student wears in class. A federal appeals court rules a school acted properly in banning U.S. flag shirts for safety reasons. Correspondent Mike Gracia explains. The Ninth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals has ruled that officials at a Northern California high school acted appropriately when they ordered students wearing t-shirts bearing the American flag to turn the garments inside out during the Mexican independence celebration Cinco de Mayo. The three-judge panel ruled unanimously that concerns of racial strife outweighed the students' rights to freedom of expression. Live Oak High School in Morgan Hill, California had a history of problems between white and Latino students at the time the order was issued. The court says Schools have wide latitude in order to ensure campus safety. I'm Mike Ross. New charges have been filed against a British hacker accused of breaking into U.S. government computers. Correspondent Warren Levinson has an update. 28-year-old Lori Love of Stratus Hall, England, was charged last fall with breaking into U.S. military and NASA computers. The new indictment accuses him of hacking into computers at the Federal Reserve as well. Love, who was arrested in Britain in October, allegedly posted the names, email addresses, and telephone numbers of users of the Federal Reserve computer system on a website. The charges, which include aggravated identity theft, carry a prison term of up to 12 years. Love was originally charged in Newark, New Jersey. The new charges were unsealed in federal court in Manhattan. Warren in Levinson, New York. If you thought there are more potholes around this winter, you're right. Correspondent Jim Ascendio reports on the pavement craters that come with a rough winter. John O'Doherty at the National Center for Pavement Preservation says this winter has produced a bumper crop of wheel benders and suspension breakers throughout the Midwest, the Mid-Atlantic, and the Northeast. We get what is called freeze-thaw cycles, where the temperature will go above freezing and then go back down again at night, and in the daytime it comes back up. And this really destroys roads. It wreaks havoc on roads. He says many government agencies have realized that filling small cracks before they become larger ones can preserve streets and highways and cost a lot less in the long run. But until all agencies pursue such policies, O'Doherty says you and your car will just have to avoid those craters. Jim Ascendio, Washington. And that's the news for Radio VR in Washington. I'm Kate Zickel. And I'm Rick Young. Welcome back to the ONN Presidential Democra Kiosk Debate. If you're just tuning in, tonight, in an historic first, Americans can ask any question at any time just by stepping into one of the thousands of Democra kiosks we've placed in front of 7-Elevens across the country. Decatur, Illinois, let your voice be heard. Hi, everybody. My name's Joe Crawford, and my question is, how many taco and cheese taquitos do you think I can eat in 60 seconds? Kevin, uh, have we screened all of these? We haven't, but we can. We can't. Great. Straight from the heart of America, raw and unfiltered, Rockville, Maryland, to Boulder, Colorado. This is the most powerful sword in the planet. So we really can't screen these things, Kevin? Not at all. Okay, then I think I'll just ask a question of my own. What's that? Okay, no, I won't. Austin, Texas. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up anything you want here. Toll free at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. And you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have waiting for you on the site. Again, that's freetalklive.com with you tonight. It's Ian. And Mark. So uh, we've got all kinds of stuff to talk about this evening. We have been talking about cell phone use while driving. You're certainly still welcome to comment on that, but I've got another driving-related case. This one is out of Sterling, Connecticut, although it's uh, it's not about your driving patterns or habits or anything like that. This one is about a grandfather who, excuse me, in this case, a great-grandfather who took the wrong child home from school. WFS... This is the wrong one of his great-grandchildren? No. Oh. Someone else's. That's interesting. Uh, WFSB reporting in Connecticut. A great-grandfather took home the wrong child from school in Sterling last week, and in response to the incident, 
Parents were updated on the pickup policy during a meeting Tuesday night. According to school officials, the man picked up a five-year-old boy from Sterling Community School, put the child in his car, and drove him home. The problem was the child wasn't his great-grandson. I wonder, a five, okay, so a five-year-old, uh, this could certainly be a kindergartner. Yep. I, I mean, <laughs> it, it's interesting to, I have a six-year-old, he's, well, he's not quite six, um, he, he would qualify for this. What, what day did it happen? Uh, what day? I don't know. Recently, school, like a last school couple, day, last like, couple of days, I last presumably week? yes. Okay, it's a fa- fairly recent. Story. My son falls into this category. He would be considered a five-year-old mm-hmm. at school at this time, um, kindergarten. And I wonder, would he just go ahead and get into a car with uh, some some old guy, old guy that he's never met before? <laughs> and I think not, but I'm not certain. You wouldn't know until you tried it. You know, well, how am I going to try it? it? What, you are you going to put a latex mask on? No, you can. Well, they actually do have those. There's uh, the YouTube pranksters like to use the latex old man mask yeah. sometimes. Uh, during an emergency meeting. I think he's going to recognize my voice. Hosted by the good point. Hosted by the Sterling Board of Education. What bo- if he wasn't called by his own name? Come on, Peter. My <laughs> name's not Peter, it's Jack. <laughs> the uh, boy's mother held back tears as she recounted what happened. Angela Stone says, my son goes with the man walking out the front doors of our school. She said a man's, the man's family called the school to say the wrong child had been brought home, and the secretary told them to bring the child back. That's good advice. In the meantime, Stone said the principal called her. He informs me our son was taken mistakenly home and reassures me that he knows the man and our son is safe. Stone said the school should have done more. My husband and I feel at, the po- at this point the police needed to be notified, she said. Her anxiety and fear turned into rage when that didn't happen. She said police and the Department of Children and Families only investigated at her request. Ms. Claybart... What's there to investigate? Well, that's a good question. That's kind of the point of this uh, story. Actually, I got this story from Free I mean, does she want Kids. this? Does she want this great-grandfather to be slapped with kidnapping charges? Well, Will that make the situation better for her? That's why I think this is a particularly outrageous story. Is instead of, or is she just doing this thing that people do when something bad happens, so that they can have a good stance for a lawsuit? You know, like you slip on the floor and it's sudden, like, Whoa! oh my god, I think I've broken my yeah. neck. <laughs> I could never walk again. I'm seeing spots. Yeah, uh, you know the the this whole thing. If so. I suppose I can understand in this litigious society why somebody would do that, but I mean, this kind of caterwauling really could result in this. How old is he? Five. No, I don't think the they're going to incarcerate the little boy. Oh, the, the old, old man? man? Yeah. Doesn't say. He's great a great grandfather. grandfather. Yeah, okay. So this, let's this say great over grandfather. 65. Yeah, he's certainly that. Um, this great grandfather ending up in, in jail. He probably doesn't drive that much as it is. At least I hope not. Uh, going to, to He probably picked up his grand great grandson from school or was attempting to at least because nobody else could would be my guess. So the woman, uh, the mom in this case, said Ms. Klebart and Mr. Muzemsi have proven themselves incompetent leaders of our school. Yep, that's what she's doing. She's setting herself up for the, the big uh, suing thing. Muzemsi is the principal of the Sterling Community School, and Klebart is the superintendent of the district. Yep, she, they weren't st- both. Neither one of these people were holding both hands of her child right. while they're, so they're protecting them from uh, little old men who right. uh, apparently Let's call were the police. Them. Yeah, let's call the police on the people who did you the favor of calling to say, oops. I mean, you should have, the, the response would seem to She wasn't to me, even there by the sounds of it. Like, they could have brought the son back, like the child back without her. <laughs> she wouldn't have known. Right. <laughs> uh, no, but it would seem like the appropriate response should be one of appreciation. Oh, my goodness. I was so worried. I didn't know what it was, what to think when my son didn't come home from school. And Oh, it turns out that you picked him up and it was just a mix-up. Boy, thank you so much for calling and, and, uh, and you know, letting us know. I sure but, do appreciate that. But sh- what this is, is you, this is the facelessness of bureaucracy. Um, what she's doing is villainizing the facelessness. Mm. So if this happened at a government school, you know, I can understand why she does it because she's, she's setting herself up for a lawsuit. She's ready to cash in. Cha-ching. She just won the lottery, right? Whereas... With my son and the Waldorf school that we send him to, I would never do this to them. 
if this happened, I would because they provide such a wonderful thing in our community. I would never attempt to scuttle the. I know what would happen to the school if they got a lawsuit like mm-hmm. this. Um, it would put them under. I would never do that because they do too much good. According to Klebart, the uh, this is the superintendent, the unidentified great grandfather who was picking up his great grandson took home a child with a similar hat. The child he picked up had the hat pulled down over his head. <laughs> uh, she says they'll learn from us firsthand what we've done to address their concerns and a better sense of where we are moving forward as a school district. Well, we're just going to lock them down. You're going to have to bring a uh, password and swipe fob, and uh, then we'll uh, let your kid out of their little numbered cage. And- Some other stirring, uh, sterling area parent said, it's awful what happened. I know the parents. If I was her, I would have been upset. Stone said she wants something to be done right away. She says, I'm demanding that immediate disciplinary action be taken against the administration. (laughs) This unbelievable and terrifying incident that our family has been through has placed the spotlight on our school's lack of security, especially during parent pickup and bus dismissal time. How do you feel about this one? 855 450 free. Do you think the mom is on the right track here? Do we need more security surrounding picking up kids from the government school? Or is she absolutely out of uh, hand, ridiculous, overreacting here? Look, your son is fine. If you want to get upset, get upset if he was picked up by a child molester who then dumped his body in a ditch somewhere. That would be a reason to be upset. But- not for somebody who actually called and said, whoops, I made a mistake. Well, I think that uh, the, 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 the argument here is is that she doesn't want that to happen. What you have to ask yourself is, is will a molester in a van, um, you know, a little ice cream truck or whatever it is, pull up and because uh, of all the security that exists in schools today, will they have the nerve to pull up and just attempt to take a kid? And it's unlikely. This news story, however, makes it more likely because it educates, uh, you know, molesters on the uh, on the policies of this school, and apparently they aren't that great. But I would think that, you know, this day and age that the, uh, you know, the perverts are going to frequent other locations. They're, you know, they'll, they'll try the Little League or the, the uh, Cub Scouts or... or parks or things like that let's go to carl he's listening in atlantic city uh, to wpg hey carl yeah i i I heard about it on a news break a few days ago and then i thought i'd see it on tv and i didn't then i looked it up on the internet and then i was there wow because i'm like i have a different kind of uh, view on things i'm thinking the great grandfather went there and to pick up the kid he had a, a hat similar and they said, oh, uh, your great-grandfather's here. And the five-year-old saying, wow, I heard so much about him. I, I, thought, I heard he was in heaven. Oh, well, <laughs> we go with him. Oh, maybe, you know. And that's why he didn't talk to the great-grandfather on the way home. He <laughs> oh, was boy. Just like, wow. That's funny. I heard so, so much about him. You know, and then he gets home, and they take the hat off, and the great-grandmother says, man, I was fixing dinner. I can't send you to do anything. You can't do anything right. I, I'm just glad because I've done that. I'm a, a grandfather, I'm not a great grandfather. Uh-huh. And you see, my my wife went and picked up my grandson, and you know, you got to show your driver's license. You got to sign in, and and they would uh, call for the kid to come down, and you take him home. And and uh, I did it sometimes, and, but I would have to have the password, and I knew the password because it was my daughter's uh, birthday. But you know. Thanks for sharing the detail on the story, Carl. I appreciate hearing from you. You're welcome to share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE-FREE-TALK-LIVE. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact and helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com 
Gold isn't for you? Ted Anderson, president of Midas Resources, one of the world's premier gold and precious metal investing firms. I get it. You wouldn't buy gold if you believed that the government is doing a great job, that the Fed will stop handing out trillions of dollars like bailout candy, that Social Security would be there for you. That's not what's happening. You might even pass on gold if the stimulus package wouldn't fuel inflation, or that the dollar wouldn't lose value, or that your retirement would be secure. If all looks rosy to you, then now is not the time to buy gold. For the realists, there have never been more sobering reasons to diversify with gold. Since 2001, the U.S. dollar index has tanked 30% while gold has risen 300%. Right now, savvy investors are adding gold to their portfolios. You should too. Find out what they know. Call us and I'll send you 10 reasons why gold will do very well, free. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. That's 800-686-2237. The warning signs. At first, he made me feel special. He promised he'd look after me, provide for my future. He broke every promise he made. Millions of Americans afflicted. I was ready to leave, but he told me he'd change. So I gave him another chance. I was such a fool. The consequences. Things only got worse. He started making my decisions for me, about my job, my kid's education, my money, my safety, my future. He took away my choices, but I kept going back to the same politicians. The diagnosis? Battered voter syndrome. I fell for the same old lies. They were just playing with my emotions, telling me what I wanted to hear. That's not right. Stop the insanity of voting for the same old abusers. Declare your independence from the two-party system and join the New Hampshire Liberty Party today at nhliberty.info. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. MindThings.com is a fun online game that pits you against people around the world to mine for scarce resources. Do business in a capitalist economy with virtually mined gold, tax-free. It doesn't require a big-time commitment. Your little mining robot guy works whether you're logged in or not. It costs nothing to play, but you can buy bonuses. They even accept bitcoins. Go to MineThings.com, use coupon code FTL, and double your mining speed. It's free. MineThings.com. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition of the program. We will take your calls about anything. Here at 855-450 free, we've been talking about driving while texting in the first hour. And then in this hour, we've been discussing or just kind of got into a case of a grandfather who picked up his, what he thought was his great grandson from the government school, elementary school or something like that. And uh, apparently it was the wrong kid. He had the wrong great grandson, somebody else's kid. So um, similar the, hat, but yeah, the, he got the hat right. Um, so this guy who calls in says he's got to show his driver's license and stuff like that, and that's very interesting. Um, likely, this great grandfather was able legally to pick up his grandson, so he fa- he passed whatever rules there are to get himself in to get a kid, right? And the school simply didn't limit him from getting somebody else's kid it, so he was one of the people that was allowed to pick up a child do you get what i'm saying right. yeah yeah i'm our caller a moment ago made it sound like the school released the child but it wouldn't make sense that they would just release a different child i think that he just picked up this kid from like when the kids got out of school well you don't know what we, the, the, the fact is is it's very different schools have different policies yeah when i was a kid um we just kind of ran around until our parents came uh, there was no. Well, that's what I mean. I think that uh, th- yes, the only way I, he I could doubt have very seriously, the there's kid. a government school where kids run around anymore. 
Okay, maybe you're right about that, Mark. But um, I I know that most schools they have a you know at least the ones I've been to they have a way for parents to kind of pull in and there's like a loop where they can you kind of haven't pull in been and pick kids up in public school in kindergarten since 27 years. True, uh, true. I guess you're right about that. So I, you know, I mean, lots and lots of things. Sandy Hook, Columbine, yeah. 9/11. A whole bunch of things have happened between now and now and then. But they have turned schools into little day prisons, okay. and this is just going to be another one of those instances where we put another failsafe in place that's going to make these places, frankly, that much less fun to have your to to grow up in. Well, certainly, if you care about your children and their education, you probably should get them out of the government schools in the first place, because uh, then ridiculous nonsense won't happen. At least in this case, it wasn't the school that did anything stupid. Uh, it was the mom who overreacted to this. We're going to continue the story here in moments. So at coffee.freetalklive.com, you can get a free pound of some of the best coffee you've ever tasted. It's uh, BuzzBox coffee. It's shade grown. This is important for people who get sort of acid reflux from coffee because you need to try shade grown and you won't have that same issue in all likelihood. It's 100% organic. Um, it's Arabica grade, top 1% Arabica. And it's, you know, it's com- when, when you consider that uh, coffee is grown in places where they don't have unleaded gas, it's kind of interesting this organic thing because that's that's something that gets a lot more important. Coffee is a very or, uh, very uh, absorbent crop, so Buzzbox comp- is competitively priced with other high end coffees, and but they do something that other coffee producers seem to care nothing for, and that is that they allow people to buy into a co-op that they've set up. And what we're trying to do is get a thousand listeners to buy their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. And that will give us the opportunity to allow 100 people to put out microloans for 100 people to buy into this co-op. And that's going to change the lives of 100 families. And I find that very exciting because I think the handout system doesn't really work. The hand up system really does. That's why I think you should uh, switch your coffee to BuzzBox Coffee by going to coffee.freetalklive.com. Get your free pound. You pay the shipping. You can cancel your subscription at any time if you don't like it, but I think you will. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right. So the idea that this grandfather had gotten some sort of special access to pick up this student i don't think makes sense okay and let me tell you mark of my experience having actually gone and done some school protests i've been outside of uh, school campuses middle schools and high schools middle schools and high schools but there was one middle school that was across the street from an elementary school and besides that ask yourself this question can students walk home from school these days yep Okay. I would so, think so. Then there's not I doubt kindergartners real... could, though. You don't think elementary schoolers or I don't just think, kindergartners? I don't think kindergartners are going to be allowed to walk home. Hmm. Okay. Well, maybe you're right about that, Mark. It's, it seems to me like students are able to walk home from school. <laughs> are you saying that first graders would be able to walk home from school? I don't know the age that they allow kids to okay. walk home from maybe school. Maybe someone who actually has a child in a school would be able to enlighten us on this. I, I... do have a child in a school. Yeah, but he's in a private school yes and it's not the same circumstance well so you know and it's really a question would that private school let kids walk home mm -hmm. and from what i can tell you zero would not uh, do not uh, walk home now you know they're sort of out in the country Mm -hmm. there's only a few houses that it would seem acceptable to you know know what i would never let a kindergartner cross that street no yeah i can't imagine for a second that the that they allow kindergartners to walk home even if that home is across the street Okay. Yeah, maybe maybe you're right about that. But certainly some students are able to walk home. Sure. Uh, and fairly young sixth, students. Sixth would be graders able to. or fifth graders, probably. Uh, you know, they've Ten changed. Years old, they've changed yeah. things uh, around since I was in school. But uh, fifth graders are completely capable of walking home or riding a bike home from yeah. school. A kindergartner is not. All right. Necessarily. All right. You, you know what? You you've sold me, Mark. Maybe you're right. Maybe there's just no uh, chance whatsoever that uh, students would be allowed to walk home or would be allowed to just be picked up. Because my my contention is that the students were getting out of school and you know kids wait in a certain area to be picked up by parents that they expect to be picking them up. But in this case, the wrong guy grabbed this kid's hand and walked him into his car and etc. I don't see how else, because if he had gone into the school and said, I'm Mr. Smith, I'm here to pick up Johnny Smith, and then they called Johnny Smith, 
then only Johnny Smith would leave the class. So he must have the, the mix up had to happen where there were you know more than one student around. I think waiting to be picked up. I'm totally speculating in this case, but uh, you know I found this story mark from a great blog, FreeRangeKids.com. Excellent, excellent blog. Highly recommend it. Lenore Skenazi was known as the world's worst mother when she allowed her 10-year-old son to walk home from school to take himself I thought he was home. 11, and he went Whatever. on a subway. Okay, he was 11. He was he walked to the subway yep. to then get on the subway and take himself home. See, he took himself home rather than having someone else yes. handle that for him. And uh, well, you have to add of- the subway into it because it adds that whole New York City frightening thing to it. You know, it's one thing for a ten-year-old to walk home from school. It's another thing for a ten-year-old to take himself home from the school via the subway because it's so much more frightening. Well, for, uh, very scaredy parents did not like this very much, and they attacked Lenore Skenazi uh, on. You various think they're media. just parents? Because I, I'll tell you what, I hear far more. Okay, I, I hear bodies. far, far more about how I should raise my son from people who do not have children than from people who do. Well, anyway, uh, Lenore says this about the story after summarizing what happened with this old uh, old, old man picking up the wrong kid, uh, five-year-old great-grandson. She says, we've been trained as a culture, because again, the mom in this case, rather than thanking them, she called the police and Child Protective Services. She says, we've been trained as a culture to treat every blip in school protocol as an outrage. We've been trained to see every child not directly supervised as an unspeakable danger. Or as in unspeakable in unspeakable danger. We have been trained to imagine what terrible thing could happen in any situation involving a child and to react as if it did or almost did. So maybe, she says, the school should go ahead and make doubly sure the kids are being picked up by the right person. But let's also remember there was an era not so long ago when no one picked up kids. We'll come back with more here. You can share your thoughts at 855-450-FREE. Big business has discovered the preparedness market, and that makes it difficult to know where to go and who to trust. MyPatriotSupply.com is owned and operated by patriots just like you, has the best prices on storable food, non-GMO seeds, water filtration devices, home canning equipment, survival and self-reliance books, and more. MyPatriotSupply.com has old-fashioned values and the absolute best customer service in the industry. Look for the deal of the day, unique affordable survival survival supplies that fit anyone's budget. Get same-day shipping on all orders and free shipping on orders over $49. Call 866-229-0927, 866-229-0927, or visit MyPatriotSupply.com for emergency preparedness, self-reliance, and food independence. Shop with a name you know and a name you can trust. Before it's time to survive, it's time to prepare. MyPatriotSupply.com. If you are like most people, chances are you're malnourished. Most people do not get the 90 essential nutrients the body needs to survive. This lack of nutrition can lead to all sorts of health issues. If you don't feel as good as you'd like, or if you're looking to get a jump start on a new, healthier you, Longevity has your answer. With the Healthy Start Pack, you get all the nutrients your body needs. With all 90 essential nutrients and 115 fruits and vegetables, you get a supplement system that is antioxidant rich and beyond compare. The Healthy Start Pack includes products backed by 40 years of science and millions of dollars in research, like Beyond Tangy Tangerine, EFA Plus 90, and OsteoFX Plus. To order your Healthy Start Pack today, call 607-739-5595. Again, that number is 607-739-5595. Once you start taking the Healthy Start Pack, you will see and feel why our motto is 90 for life. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges start a conversation with your neighbor or your doctor or your family or your school. Now there's teachers and lawyers and business executives and they all wear shiny badges and they all reject the state. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges show the world that you reject coercion and aggression and oppression by the state. Shinybadges.com 
Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Freedom Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number brought to you by ProXPN. We've got Skype as well. You can Skype into the show at username lrn.fm. Did this mom overreact when she freaked out uh, about this great-grandfather picking up her son? It wasn't the right son. It wasn't the right great-grandfather. He picked up a child who had a similar hat. The child had the hat pulled down over his face or kind of over his head. I don't know if it was cold or whatever, kids being kids. Uh, but, you know, he got the wrong kid, got him all the way home, and then realized the mistake, called the school to let them know, and immediately brought him back. I mean, it could have gone worse, sure. And as Lenore Scanazzi points out on her blog over at freerangekids.com. The problem with people is that they're trained to overreact. They are looking for an excuse to overreact. Mark, you believe she's trying to set up for a lawsuit in this case, yeah, she I, may I, very well be. That's what I see in this circumstance, but I also am clear that um, you know my most valuable, and I don't know, I'm not going to use the term possession because Jack isn't really a possession in, the, in that sense, but um, my most valuable thing I have in the world, the thing that I love the most is my son, mm-hmm. And I understand why people are the way they are about it. You don't know fear until you've been a parent. All you people who think you understand what fear is, just the the moment you have a child and you imagine them wander, toddling off into the street mm-hmm. when they're just not around you, that's the kind of thing that grips you when you're a parent. I get, I completely get that. Um, at the same time, you know, I mean, this culture really has gotten out of control. Uh, there, there's a story... We had a caller call in about, I believe, uh, where she had uh, put her baby into her car and, uh, you know, put him in the the seat. The car was running um, and she went to take the shopping cart back to the shopping cart corral. Yep. And then she comes back and there's a breathless woman standing by her uh, her, her car door. She walked down three or four <laughs> parking spaces. Some busybody wanted to give her a piece of her mind. Well, the, but just, just, oh my God, thank goodness you're here. I, <laughs> oh my, I didn't know what to do. You know, like the child, is, he's not, not screaming, not doing anything, asleep in the car seat. Mm-hmm. She took the cart to the cart corral and when she came came back there's this woman having a fit and if I, I think that there's it's very difficult to know where is the right spot where's the where's the right spot in the continuum because kids sadly are going to be hurt and injured and, and bad things are going to happen to them no matter what we do 
So you can always take you can always err on the side of uh, discretion every single time. But what does that do, and what position does it put parents in? I think it's really, really sad when I see parents going through the TSA. I had to do this, and what an awful experience! They've got to tote the car seat because you you got to bring a car seat when you travel with a child because otherwise you can't leave the airport. So you uh, al- you always have to have a car seat because a child has to travel in a car seat, right? Oh, I see what you're saying. So, so if, if you're going to get take, in a cab, you have to have a car seat? Whatever you do, you have to have a car seat. Ridiculous. So the, the only option you have is to either be dropped off or park a car with a car seat, ha- yeah. come to the airport with a car with a car seat, yep. and leave the airport, like say with the grandparents or something, who have a car seat already <laughs> in the car, or you travel with the car seat. Don't forget the uh, the mother's milk, the uh, formula, the... the the little carrot, the little carrots that are uh, c- cut into baby cut carrots, because they're not actually uh-huh. baby carrots. They can't call them baby carrots. They're not baby carrots. They're baby cut carrots, okay. um, and the whole things, and they've got to go through them and swab them, make sure your kid's not a terrorist kid, and yep. it's just, it's awful. Sounds like it's it. It's just gotten bananas what we put parents through. I rode in the back window of our, um, you know, 71 Cutlass uh, <laughs> back there, you know, right in the, the window. You know, now this would be considered some kind of Abuse. executable offense. Yeah. But back then, this is just what children did. Yeah, yeah, man. I remember uh, being in the remember the old, uh, what do they call them, the family wagons where they had that big old door on the back. And, yeah. Uh, a lot of times, if the wagon's too full, people just go in the back of the wagon, you know? Well, and, and riding in back of pickup trucks. Sure. Sometimes oh God, you still that see fun. that. Yeah. Sometimes you still see that in America. I would beg and beg and beg to be in the back <laughs> for the, with the dog. Yeah. Well, if it's good enough for the dog, why isn't it good enough for the kids? In Denmark, it's not good enough for the dog. Really? Um, you, the dog has to have a seatbelt now. <laughs> so, I mean, this is the path we go down. And oh, it's man. It, it, basically civilization is going to get so constricting, it's going to have to crumble in on itself. And apparently we can start all over again and kids will be able to ride in the back seat, back, back windows of cars again. So I, I love uh, the Free Range Kids blog. It's freerangekids.com and Lenore Skenazi's uh, book, Free Range Kids. Talking about how to stop this nonsense of the the kind of the rounded corners, the safety everything. The uh, she's got a term for it, but I'm I'm spacing on what it is right now. But there's like this this term that she's coined or is made popular that has to do with the, the, the I think really encapsulates it. This idea of overprotecting people and overprotecting to the point where the children can't grow. You know, they can't make mistakes. And experience consequences, which are important things to experience as a child, to make mistakes and experience consequences. Some so consequences you learn. are deadly. Some consequences yeah. are crippling. Okay. I, so I mean, those are those are the things that go through parents' minds, and I get it. The problem is, is that when one parenting style comes into such fundamental conflict with other parenting styles, you know, I I, I don't know. Like for some pa- some parents, feeding your kid Cheetos is abuse. Mm. So I, I mean, are we going to let the people? You know, are we going to let the person who's on the extreme end of the bell curve every time dictate how we treat our kids? Your toll free number here eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Did the mom overreact in this case? She called the police even after learning that her son was safe. He was safe. He just went with the wrong old man. That's understandable. All the kids look the same to the old guy, and the old guys look the same to the kids. So, it also you know, brings up the issue of the uh, the the villainizing of males. If he would she have done the same thing if, if she left with a great great grandmother rather than a great grandfather? Oh, I mean, you know, there's the creepy old man, yeah. uh, you know, story out there, and so, mm. I you know, the, there's this. I, my son, when he gets to be fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. I am going to advise him very, very strongly against doing any babysitting for extra money because there's no way that I would want if a male something, babysitter. Yeah, there's no way that, that, that I would want him put into that position. It, it's just too dangerous. People think bad things about males. Toll free number again, 855 450 free. We've got Skype. You can Skype into the show, username lrn.fm. Robert is in Vermont. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Robert. 
hey, you know, that woman, she's got to get you know, get real, you know? Get over it. Yeah. The kid's safe. You know, go on with the next episode. You know what I mean? Totally agree. So what's on your mind tonight, you know, Roger, or, uh, Robert? Hey, uh, you know, about a week or so ago, Ian, you added me to a, a website that's out of Keene. Uh-huh. I I maybe you could share with me a little bit about it. I'm not sure what you're talking about. Um, how is it spelled? K-E-E-N? I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, you got to remember, we're doing a national radio show here, Robert. So is there... How is it relevant to our uh, national radio audience? Well, no, I would, it was just a, a website that you added me to that I'm not familiar with, and I just wanted to just, you know, if you would talk a little bit about it, that's all. I wish I knew what you're talking about. I don't, uh, I don't know what website it is. I don't re- recall adding you to, uh, to any sort of website. So d- can you give me the site name, and maybe that'll help? I, I can't remember how it's spelled. Well, I don't know what I'm supposed to do for you then, Robert. I wish you the best, and thank you for the call tonight. Let's continue on here at 855-450-FREE. Uh, again, toll-free number 855-450-3733. We really can't do uh, you know, technical support on the air here on Free Talk Live. I realize that you know it's open phones, but if you've got a technical question, feel free to email us or post on our Facebook page, and uh, we'll, we'll get back to you as soon as we can. So, 855 453 Live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live continues here in moments. Do you need to lose weight? Then listen up. Right now in your area, a breakthrough weight loss supplement is being given out risk-free to 50 callers of this station. The active ingredient, HCA, is pure, potent, and has been known to cause impressive weight loss. So please take no more than two capsules a day. To experience results for yourself, call now. But hurry, supplies are limited. Call 1-800-311-5680. Garcinia Plus contains all natural ingredients with no chemical additives or preservatives. However, However, if your weight loss is too rapid, please reduce down to one capsule every day. A recently published clinical study found the active ingredient HCA, found in Garcinia cambogia, resulted in significant weight loss by appetite suppressions and reducing emotional eating by boosting serotonin levels. Hurry and call now before risk-free supplies are gone. Call 1-800-311-5680. 1-800-311-5680. That's 1-800-311-5680. I will never forget the day my son Jeremy told me he hated me and slammed the door in my face. I'm behavioral therapist Janet Lehman. Behavior problems can turn the child you love and your life into a nightmare. That's why my husband James and I created the Total Transformation, the step-by-step program that shows you how to fix the worst behavior problems and get your child to respect and listen to you again. No matter what the behavior, defiance, backtalk, angry outbursts, disrespect, we can help you stop it. Now you can get the total transformation for free. All you need to do is get the program and let us know how it works for you. You can keep it forever for free. Limited number of free programs available. Call now. 1-800-807-8284. 1-800-807-8284. That's 1-800-807-8284. 1-800-807-8284. NASA's recent discovery of water on Mercury has led to speculation among scientists that the planet could potentially sustain an intergalactic space prison housing the universe's worst criminals. Scientists believe that organic compounds found on the planet's surface could be useful for creating an off-world space Australia, where strength is the only law. However, they caution it is too early to say whether or not fights among the space jail's prisoners would be broadcast here on Earth for the entertainment of wealthy gamblers. But NASA's lead researchers do say that Mercury's ability to support human life raises important questions about who the prison guards would be. Perhaps the guards themselves would be space mercenaries, or maybe we'd just use robots. The robots would have guns for hands. Well, obviously. Critics inside NASA caution against funneling too many resources into the Mercury project when it would be so much cooler to build a prison on the moon ruled by clones of the prisoners themselves. Researchers encourage the public to read their findings, which have been released in the form of a graphic novel titled The Mercury Cipher. This is the Onion News Network. 
The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Did you know coffee is the second most absorbent crop on earth? Most coffee at grocery stores or in chains contains banned pesticides and has a high mold content. Seriously, we're proud to partner with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to provide the best of the best coffee, Buzzbox Coffee. Try a free pound today. You cover shipping. 10% of future purchases benefit our efforts to give the gift of human freedom throughout the world. At least 100 World Vision microfinance loans. For more information, go to coffee.freetalklive.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. Bring up whatever you want here on the live Saturday edition of the program. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And that is the Pro XPN toll-free line. You can join us online at freetalklive.com. And if you like what we're doing here on Free Talk Live, then please support the show by shopping with us. Uh, and also, uh, yeah, shopping with us at shop.freetalklive.com. All kinds of uh, great stuff is available there because Amazon is linked. You can go to the Amazon for the UK, Amazon for Canada, Amazon for the US as well. And uh, whichever one you choose, Free Talk Live gets a portion of the purchase price when you start your shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. So thanks. Have you been hearing about Bitcoins in the news? Yes. Have you been thinking that, hmm, perhaps I should get some of these Bitcoiny things, but I don't know how? Well, I'm going to tell you how. You go to cashintocoins.com. They make it easy for you to get Bitcoins. All you have to do is uh, you can send them a money order, a check, or wire transfer, and They'll get you your Bitcoins within, I think it's a, a full business day of, uh, of the receipt of your money. And I've done a lot of business with CashIntheCoins.com. Look, I understand it doesn't feel comfortable just sending a, uh, a money order out there into the ether, but I've moved lots of money through CashIntheCoins.com buying Bitcoins, and I'm telling you, you can trust the guys over there. Customer service is their top priority. Um, they run a completely legal operation. They're a licensed money transmitter. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, it's, it's MSB, uh, registered MSB with U.S. government. So there you go, uh, CashIntoCoins.com. All right, let's go back to the phones and the fun. We go to Dana, ladies first here. Uh, Dana's in Michigan listening to WTKG in Grand Rapids. Hey, Dana. Hi, guys. I got a question. Did they say the age of the great-grandfather? No, they don't identify him, actually, in the story. Uh, you're talking about the story of the great-grandfather okay. picking up what he thought was his five-year-old great-grandson, yeah. but in point of fact, it wasn't. It was a different child. Uh, no, they don't identify him, so we have no idea how old he is. Okay, because I'm guessing that if they're going to send, if the granddaughter is sending her grandfather to pick up, you know, the great-grandson... I'm guessing that, you know, depending on how early everybody had everybody else, you know, giving birth, yeah. I'm guessing this guy, you know, maybe 75. Mm -hmm. Sounds you right. Know how many, I mean, pardon me? It sounds right. That would be my guess, too. Oh, yeah. Like about 75. Look at some of these actors and actresses. Now, you know, like, um, who's that one that's 94, that, that woman, that older lady, she was part of, I think, the Golden Girls or whatever. Uh, Betty, Betty, White. Betty White, Betty yeah. White, the one that everybody loves. Look at how good she looks. Her mind is so alert. You know, she's 94 years old. So mm -hmm. if this guy is, I'm going to say, in his 70s, I'm, she's mad at the school, and maybe I'd be a little bit, I'd be upset at the school a little bit. But excuse me, where is the interpersonal communication between her grandfather and her own son? Well, well point of point of clarification, the, uh, the the lady who okay, so the mom in this case, the angry mom, 
instead of being yeah. appreciative of finding her son and him being fine, uh, the angry mom isn't, you know, the granddaughter of the this old man. He. Oh, that's right. That's right. Okay, but but the point is. So we don't we don't know, know if the mom sent uh, anyone else to pick up her son from school okay, that day. Okay, that's right. That's right. I'm sorry, I messed yep. that part up. No problem. But still, where is the interpersonal communication? This guy is an older gentleman. Aren't you saying hi, honey? How you doing? You know, and and at five, I don't know. I don't remember everything in kindergarten. I'm gonna tell you that right now. But I remember my teacher like it was yesterday. I I remember a couple very special outfits that I had that were my favorite. There were things I remembered. And at five years old, I knew who my grandparents, great-grandparents, my family was, this and that. And the fact of the matter is, why wouldn't this little... And I know little boys. It was a little boy, right? Yeah, five years old, little boy. Okay. And, you know, I know boys don't take this wrong, you two guys. But (laughs) I'm saying this about the elderly gentlemen as well as the little boys. You know, you can send guys to stores. You can tell them exactly where the thing is, and they'll bring home ten things that. Oh yeah, time. yeah. My yeah, my totally. wife would love you know, to have a conversation with you about this yeah. and how right. she can stop it. Guys are just guys are like they're like do 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 do, kind of like the Pink Panther music. You know what I mean? They're just so unaware of details. Okay, I get that, <laughs> but I would say this to the mother of the five-year-old as well as to this older gentleman. You don't talk to each other. You don't say, hi, how are you doing? I mean, we're not talking about this older gentleman with a stupid nose in a text or in a cell phone, totally ignoring his child, grandchild, or great-grandchild. We're talking about him picking this kid up. I can't imagine that on both sides, both the child <laughs> yeah. side as a it's bizarre I can't imagine, story. I can't imagine it on either side either. I just keep on th- trying to imagine somebody picking up my son, Jack, who's five years yeah. old, um, you know, and just getting him getting in the car. It, it, it befuddles me, and I don't know if he – I don't think he would. It's a, it is a weird story well, because you – does your child, excuse me for interrupting, do you tell your child, I know you probably did the whole don't go with strangers thing, but do you tell your child to have, you know, teach them to have interpersonal communication? I mean, it's basic manners and etiquette where you say, hi, how are you doing? Or, hi, I'm so glad to be out. Or guess what we did in school today? You Mark know teaches his how son that. He, he, your son's very good at uh, shaking hands and introducing himself, yeah, I would say. I, well, I, I, I find it very, very important that he uh, look people in the eye when he speaks to them. I really, mm. I just, it, it bothers me that kids aren't taught to look people in the eye. Yeah, so it makes me what it would be fascinating to actually see some sort of video of how this young man was uh, this young youngster was picked up from the school in the first place. Uh, you know, did the old guy just kind of walk up and say, "All right, son, let's go," and you know, reach his hand out and grab him and walk away? And get then, in the car. Maybe they did have a conversation in the car. You yeah. know, maybe maybe it wasn't driving in silence. Maybe well, what did you learn today? He probably you know? can't hear or see very well. I mean, I at forty three, I can sympathize. <laughs> Dana, thanks for your call tonight. Appreciate hearing from You're you. Well. Yeah. Free Talk Live would like to apologize to the youthful ninety two year old Betty White. Oh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> apologize on behalf of Dana there. Let's go on here with you and your thoughts. Uh, go to Ross in Alabama. You're on Free Talk Live. Ross. Okay, sir. Uh, I'm a grandfather, and I was taking my grandson to private school every single day for a couple of years and to the public school. And the communication, going to the school, you have to sign in and sign out when you pick the child up. Mm. And also when you go into the public school, there's always somebody at the side entrance, even before the bus, if you're picking the child up, the double checks between the child and whoever it is to make sure they're matched up. So really? I can sympathize with the lady that uh, that uh, she was flipping out. Like, I mean, for a child, they definitely made a serious mistake at the school because their so, security is so, so what you're saying right is, if you're respect. just get, you, you, what you're saying is, if the school's getting out, you can't just roll up into the bus loop or the, the parent loop no, and, and just, you know, kid not. runs into the car. No, no, no. No, no, no. There's a person there with all the kids, even if there's 20 kids there. Hmm. Well, now, of course, the there's different the... uh, systems in different places, right? So, uh, you know, yeah, what but it's even like... if you go in, when you go into the front door to the school off hours and not at the time of pickup, you yeah. got to go in and, and sign in. That's security, pretty typical. Do all the matches and the whole works. Like, I mean, 
that was standard in in uh, all the schools. Well, let me now, ask the you other this. Thing I just wanted to touch on. Yeah, let me right. ask you this. So the so the grandpa is probably could conceivably I don't know uh, probably I'm not gonna say probably could conceivably have been great grandpa um, was would be one one of the people that could do this pickup right like so he's an approved individual and maybe they've seen him several times. Um, yeah, so, well, if he's done that, then then that's legit. But, okay, but I mean, the, the lady does have a security issue. She's oh, she does. Right. I, but and I, you got to understand that women flip out more than what guys do. Okay, so that's that's a standard thing for women. But the other thing you have to understand <laughs> is the way your mind functions. When you put a ladder up against the side of a building, and you're planning out what to do, your mind has multiple different things that go through your mind that you can fall off the roof, you can do this, and all these evil things that you think about. And what that your mind is trained like that so that it teaches you what not to do so you don't fall off the roof or do whatever little job you do. So you plan your little thoughts, the things, the bad things that are going to happen to you, and then you don't put a screw through your finger or you don't put Mm -hmm. your hand on a piece of glass. That's the way your mind is supposed to function. So all these little evil things that come into your mind are little things that come in there to protect you. Yeah, but you're making excuses for the lady freaking out, and I don't think that's necessary at all in this. When have you ever been around with a woman that hasn't freaked out? Come on, guys. (laughs) Thanks for the call, Ross. I appreciate hearing from you. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know about that. I mean, well, what about the ladies? Like men are ditzy; they can't remember anything. (laughs) Hey, Ross got a freebie. He he deserved it because more on the way. (laughs) This is how the sexes feel about each other. Eight fifty-five, four fifty free. That's the pro XPN toll free line you can take control of the airwaves here hour number three is on the way you can keep talking about this if you'd like or bring up absolutely anything you want get a couple calls holding and uh if they'll stay through the news we'll find out what they want to explore i think it's actually looks like bitcoin is coming up free talk live come celebrate bitcoin's race into the future at the texas bitcoin conference march 6 2014 at the circuit of the americas in austin texas just before south by southwest The conference will be packed with the hottest speakers and key players in the Bitcoin world. This one is not to be missed. Get the details at TexasBitcoinConference.com. Register now with fiat or, of course, Bitcoin. That's TexasBitcoinConference.com. Free Speech Me is a free software plugin for Firefox that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. You can register a .bit domain today using the inexpensive cryptocurrency Namecoin. .bit domains are extremely resistant to being shut down or hijacked by governments, corporations, or criminals. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to effortlessly get to your site using your .bit address and our Free Speech Me plugin. Go right now to freespeechme.org. Free Speech Me is a free software plugin for Firefox that allows you to effortlessly view .bit websites. .bit is a new type of web address that's not controlled by any government or corporation. You can register a .bit domain today using the inexpensive cryptocurrency Namecoin. .bit domains are extremely resistant to being shut down or hijacked by governments, corporations, or criminals. If anyone ever shuts down your .com website, users will still be able to effortlessly get to your site using your .bit address and our Free Speech Me plugin. Go right now to freespeechme.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, March 1st, 2014. Silver is trading at $21.24 per ounce. Gold is worth $1,328 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $559. Antiwar.com reports, since the fall of the Soviet Union, Russia's access to overseas military bases has shrunk precipitously. 
Indeed, at present, the only base they have left that isn't in the former Soviet Union is the naval base in Syria's Tartus. As Russia hopes to modernize its military and return to the role of a global military power, officials say they are in talks with eight countries across the world trying to work out deals for new access. In 2002, President Putin shut down bases in Cuba and Vietnam, citing financial constraints. Those nations are at the top of the list now, along with Venezuela, Nicaragua, Algeria, Cyprus, Seychelles, and Singapore. Financial troubles in the post-Soviet era forces Russia to dramatically scale back its military spending. And while the U.S. still outspends them 10 to 1, Russia has recently been reported to have passed Britain as the third-place military spender. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Amagi Metals. If you're looking for a place to purchase gold and silver, look no further than Amagi Metals. Amagi Metals offers beautiful gold and silver rounds and ingots at great prices. Amagi Metals carries the 50-gram Cumbi Bar, a 50-gram gold bar comprised of 50 detachable 1-gram gold bars. They also have a 100-gram silver Cumbi Bar and much more. Amagi Metals also accepts Bitcoin and recently added Litecoin and Dogecoin to their payment options. This allows you the ability to convert your Bitcoin, Litecoin, or Dogecoin into precious metals. Shop Amagi Metals at gold.fppradio.com. That's gold.fppradio.com. Coinbase announced yesterday that the company has reached a huge milestone, having opened 1 million consumer wallets. The blog post on their website reads, It's hard to believe that we started 2013 with just under 13,000. That is an astounding growth rate of over 7,500%. Since our founding in June 2012, we've been on the ground floor of an industry that has the potential to reinvent the way people transact online, and one that is just now beginning to show its full potential. We've seen an unprecedented number of merchants, more than 25,000 so far, using the Coinbase platform to attract new customers and conduct real business. FPP Radio News is brought to you by $6 Shirts. $6 Shirts is one of the top t-shirt companies on the web, and they want to be the t-shirt company for the Bitcoin marketplace. They actually give priority to all Bitcoin orders. Go look at their shirts. They're witty, hip, smart, and liberty-oriented. Shop $6 shirts using my affiliate link, 6.fppradio.com, and help support FPP Radio News. That's 6.fppradio.com. The New York Times reports, according to accounts of documents leaked by Edward J. Snowden, a British intelligence agency collected video webcam images many of them sexually explicit, from millions of Yahoo users, regardless of whether they were suspected of illegal activity. The surveillance efforts operated by Britain's Government Communications Headquarters, or GCHQ, was codenamed Optic Nerve. Images from Yahoo webcam chats were captured in bulk through the agency's fiber optic cable taps and saved to a GCHQ database. According to a report on Thursday by The Guardian, it is unclear how much of the data was shared with American officials at the NSA, though the British ran queries of the data using a search tool provided by the NSA called X-Key Score. The agency also apparently experimented with facial recognition technology, which searched webcam images for faces resembling those of GCHQ targets. One undated document shows that the agency shuttered this capability. It is unclear if or when it was resurrected. It is also unclear if the NSA had access to the metadata and images. Yahoo said in a statement on Thursday that it was not aware of the program and expressed outrage at published reports. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Coming up a little later, the 10 best careers for someone at your level of attractiveness. Oh, but right now we have something truly incredible for you. Kenneth Quinn is a real-life psychic medium who claims that he can communicate with dead acquaintances. He's written a new book. It's called Small Talk from Beyond, Speaking with Distant Relatives and Friends of Friends Who Have Passed. Hi, Good Kenneth. Good to see you. Now, Thank Kenneth, you. you've written that you're able to connect people with the spirits of their old college professors or roommates that they didn't really know that well. When did you realize that you had this gift? Well, it was the day after my cousin's friend's wife's funeral. 
I was at home and I suddenly felt a presence in the room with me. And I heard a voice say, it's Vicky. Vicky Solchek, Dale's wife. Wow. We made a Tim's birthday thing a while back, and we talked about how hard it is having a cat. Fascinating. This has been so amazing. This has <laughs> been fabulous. Thank you, Kenneth Quinn, for being our guest. Stay with us, because coming up next, we're going to show you how to lose some of that excessive weight by constantly picking at your skin. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We're launching into the third hour of this live Saturday edition of the program. With you tonight, it's Ian. And Mark. We've got a website. You can go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features on the site. Uh, news updates, you can sign up for our email news list or follow us on Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. Or, you know, whatever combination of those that you'd like, you can go to news.freetalklive.com and do all of that there for free. That's news.freetalklive.com. From overprotecting kids to cell phone bans in cars. We've talked about those things so far tonight, but we can talk about anything that's on your mind. So let's go to the phones and to the fun and start this hour out with Danny in Virginia. Danny, you're on Free Talk Live with Ian and Mark. Hey, guys. How you doing? Hey, Danny. Go ahead with your thoughts. Um, I got a question. I, you know, I've been listening to you guys a couple, for a couple of weeks, and I know you guys have been plugging Bitcoin and stuff like that. Um, and I started getting interested in it, and then I heard on the radio this uh, was it two days ago that uh, somebody had hacked into it or stolen all the Bitcoin? Have you guys heard anything about this? Yeah, let me handle that. So there is a, a, the most popular exchange at one point in the Bitcoin world was an exchange called MT Gox. And that stood for Magic the Gathering Online Exchange. And it was previously, before Bitcoins came along, it was an exchange for people to trade trading cards uh, amongst each other, specifically Magic the Gathering trading cards. And since Bitcoin... Hey, I knew it was those... I knew it was those nerds all along. They were up to something. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so this this particular nerd who had this exchange decided, oh, I'd like Bitcoins. We'll make it, you know, I'm I'm ready. I've got a site that's sort of ready to, to switch over. But he didn't have a very good site. He just happened to have the first site to market. That's and, worth a lot. And Bitcoin had this... Uh, it's you know this aspect to it that they call the malleability bug. Now the malleability bug was addressed by the Bitcoin developers in 2011, but you needed to update your website in order to address these issues. And if you didn't update your website, then you're going to still be you were you would still be uh, you know susceptible to this. And so the what he blew it. Yeah. What what at one point was the largest Bitcoin exchange on the internet and and wasn't any time recently. Or at least it depends on what your definition of recently was, but wasn't in the last few months the the most uh, important online exchange. Didn't update their website. It, it's just this crappy, awful website that has had many problems throughout the years. I left them, uh, you know, a, a year ago and pulled all my money out because I didn't want anything to do with these people because they seem to have no relationship to customer service and the truth. So. Those folks um, had a situation where apparently a bunch of bitcoins were stolen from them, mm -hmm. and to say that bitcoin their customers yes well them well th them but they, their customers gave them their bitcoins to hold on to, so and they didn't they failed at that. This is essentially blaming the U.S. dollar for a blank for a bank robbery. If if one blames bitcoin for well right if a bank uh, if a bank fails or gets robbed. That doesn't mean the dollar doesn't work. It doesn't mean the dollar's been right. hacked. In this case, uh, MT Gox, this website, once upon a time was on the top of the heap. Not so much anymore. Uh, they have failed. That doesn't mean Bitcoin is insecure. It doesn't mean Bitcoin has been hacked. However, there is oh, this kind okay. of mainstream media narrative about Bitcoin. And then the mainstream media narrative tends to be that, aha, see, we told you this Bitcoin is unpredictable and dangerous. Our uh, corporate paymasters right. wanted you to stop this. Now, right. here's an extra piece of evidence for you is, is that Bitcoin, when this occurred, this, uh, you know, Mt. Gox got hacked, news finally came out. Uh, Bitcoin crashed down to about four hundred dollars per Bitcoin. Down from around five fifty. Down from about five fifty to yep. four hundred. It is now at five sixty eight. So 
Wow. It, it has recovered and gone slightly and it above. it came back after about an hour. Yeah, right? it, it really didn't go anywhere long. anytime soon because what people saw was that Bitcoin continues to do what Bitcoin has done all along, which is that it provides you with the ability to do banking on your own. It's completely unhackable. Um, you know, just everything Bitcoin's supposed to do, it does, and that this was a problem with a particular website. Oh, okay, great. Because, you know, like, and you, it, it did come from the mainstream media, and, and, you know, of course, they're always on top of things. And like I said, I just wanted to, you guys seemed like you really researched, and obviously, uh, by the uh, explanation you've given me, uh, thank you for that, by the way, uh, you guys have definitely done your homework on this. And, you know, I was like, well, if it's gotten hacked, you know, great. Now, uh, something I was interested in, but uh, it looks like... Um, you know, well, something I may want to get involved in. One yeah, well, things, so one thing's for sure. At some point, Bitcoin's going to be replaced. It's going to be replaced by some other form of currency that's better and stronger, and that'll be a good thing. Today, right. Bitcoin is the very best thing when you look at currencies out there. It's a huge technological innovation over decentralized, dumb government piece of pa pieces of paper like the source. euro, the, the ruble, and the dollar. Yeah, it's decentralized, right, it's open right. source, and if you haven't looked into it I mean, yet, I'll what I'd recommend, uh, Danny, is to go to weusecoins.com. There's a great introductory okay. video there that you spend two minutes on, and you can kind of get a good grip on what the Bitcoin is, and then, you, of course, you can dig in as deep as you want into this topic. Uh, the Bitcoin universe right. is a very, very deep one if you want to go that far, but if you just want an over, you know, cursory overview, weusecoins.com is a great starting point. And then, get your first Bitcoin wallet over at blockchain.info, that's what we recommend it's an easy wallet to use you can use it online on any computer that can access the web and you can also download an app for an android smartphone to make it uh, simple to transact bitcoin with anyone anywhere blockchain.info and they can't hack in and take uh, you know all of blockchain's uh, bitcoins the way they did mt gox because blockchain never actually possesses your bitcoins all the encryptions done inside your browser so well, plus they also don't uh, they're not right. subject to the transaction malleability bug either right. They fixed that yeah, years well, ago. Yeah, they fixed that years ago. Huh. There you go. I Anything else? It, no, Thanks. no. Thank you very much. I, I really appreciate it. Thank sure, you so man. Much, no man. problem. Good luck out there. I appreciate your call. Let's go to Fred. He's in California. Fred, you're on Free Talk Live. Um, is this Mark I'm talking to? Mark's in the studio. I'm Ian. I'm sitting here. Ian, how you doing? Thanks for taking my call. And, um, sure. And thanks for what you guys are doing. Um, talk show radios and talk show formats are very important today. Um, I wish we had them back in the 60s. Um, but um, on the Bitcoin, I have a question for you. Um, how does the Bitcoin maintain my purchasing power over the years? Well, that's a great question. Um, so we don't know what's going to happen with the Bitcoin over the years. It's been around for about five years at this point. So far, if you had purchased Bitcoin any year previous, you will be doing very, very well. Yeah. Your purchasing it wouldn't power, have maintained your purchasing power. It would have dramatically grown your purchasing power. About a year ago, Bitcoin was around 30 something dollars, I believe. It hit a, I think I saw a news article the uh, like earlier this week that a year prior, Bitcoin had hit a, a, a record high a year ago at $31 or something like that. It's now over five hundred dollars, so it's more than ten times what it was a year ago. So your purchasing power would have increased had you purchased Bitcoin a year back. Uh, so what's going to happen in another year? I, you know, obviously we don't know. Hopefully it'll continue to go up, but anything can happen. This is, you know, unlike gold and silver, which have thousands of years or hundreds and hundreds of years of of history. Uh, we're, this is relatively un, you know, unstaked territory. Well, that that leads me up to um, the next question, and then that is is if I had uh, 1,000 one ounce gold eagles in front of me, how would you talk me into buying a Bitcoin and taking possession of what I have in physical possession and exchanging it for a Bitcoin? Why would I want to do that if gold and silver over, let's say, 8,000 year history has proven very successful in maintaining? purchasing power. The reason and why is because would, that's not the purpose of Bitcoin. It's not to uh, the purpose of Bitcoin isn't to keep you up uh, against inflation to to maintain your uh, your your value against inflation. The purchase of, the purpose of Bitcoin, from my perspective, is to evolutionize or revolutionize the uh, the money systems of the world by giving people a money that they can use that is not controlled by a bank and not controlled by any world government. So uh, Bitcoin, if you want to get into Bitcoin, you could do it from an investor 
investor's perspective and you know hope to make some money over time you could do it from that perspective but for me it's a long term uh, game against the you know kind of the system as is if you value the idea of a new currency that's decentralized and easy to use then that's what you would want to do you can't take gold and silver and buy stuff at overstock.com or tigerdirect.com you can't use gold and silver in any meaningful fashion over distances especially uh, to purchase goods and services. Bitcoin, you can do that with. And Fred, thanks for your call tonight. We're on the way here. You can take control at 855 free. Coming up, we'll check in with Jason King from Sean's Outpost. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top one percent arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com on the average, Americans work between 45 to 50 years hoping to build up enough wealth to retire and live out their golden years. Unfortunately, with taxation, the rising cost of food, energy, housing, and medical, many retirees are forced to live below the poverty line. Is this a flaw free enterprise, or is our monetary unit we call the Federal Reserve Note forcing us into perpetual debt, ensuring inflation and higher taxes? These questions and more can be answered by reading G. Edward Griffin's book, The Creature from Jekyll Island. Congressman Ron Paul states it's what every American needs to know about central bank power. A gripping adventure into the secret world of international banking cartel. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. I will give a silver dollar from the early 1900s to anyone who purchases this book. Call 1-800-686-2237 and order a copy today. It's critical that the public be made aware of the system. Call and order your copy today at 1-800-686-2237. That's 1-800-686-2237. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats, the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. How many lawyers does it take to change a light bulb? None. They'd rather keep their clients in the dark. There are too many lawyer jokes to count. However, there are some lawyers with more noble intentions. At the Institute for Justice, we bring the light to our clients. We are a nonprofit public interest law firm with clear values and principles. At IJ, we fight for those whose most basic rights are denied by the government. Visit our website today at ij.org. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. We 
This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition, here to take your calls about whatever you want, whether it's Bitcoin or overprotecting kids. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. That's 855-450-3733, and that number is brought to you by ProXPN. You can also join us online. Just go to freetalklive.com and enjoy the features that we have on the site. We've got listening options, several listening options. Our live streams are there 24-7. The latest episode of Free Talk Live is always airing at listen.freetalklive.com. We've got radio stations, over 140 great stations coast-to-coast that air the show at various different times throughout the week. And actually, coast to coast and beyond, I guess we can say now, because we're in uh, Guam, as well as U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, Satellite listening options, we've got that, including the free-to-air channel, which allows you to get tuned in via a a very affordable equipment. uh, You you buy a receiver, you buy a dish, you hook it up, and then you get to receive the LRN.FM satellite channel for $0 per month. So go to listen.freetalklive.com to learn more about those ways to get Free Talk Live in your ears. Plus, we've got a webcam. You can watch and listen to that. And our listen lines that allow you to call from any phone that can dial long distance. Listen.freetalklive.com to learn more. If you're an outdoor enthusiast and you're looking for camping, hunting, survival, or shooting gear, you need to know about the website manventureoutpost.com. Now, obviously... ManVentureOutpost.com isn't going to check your gender at the the web page. Anybody can shop there. As a matter of fact, they have lots of uh, women's apparel, too. Mostly that's where uh, males and females uh, differ because they're all going to want the same knives and mm-hmm. flashlights. <laughs> you know, they, have, they, have, uh, they sell handguns, long guns, and ammunition. And actually, they have handguns in uh, pink, bows and arrows in pink, if that's what you want. Um, not to say that everyone would want a pink handgun, but it's kind of cute. Anyway, go to manventureoutpost.com for out, all your outdoor enthusiast needs. And what you'll find when you get there are some of the best prices you're going to be able to find on any outdoor equipment. I have always price checked Man, Man Venture whenever I've uh, shopped there, and every time they've come up to be the lowest on every single item that I have purchased. Now, they have a low price guarantee, which have, which should uh, set your mind at ease that the, at the very least, you need to check them before you buy. ManVentureOutpost.com. It's a family owned uh, operation, and you can trust them. I've been doing business with them for years. ManVentureOutpost.com. Jason King is on the line from Sean's Outpost. We had Jason on the show a couple weeks ago as he had just crossed in or out of Florida on his Run Across America. BitcoinAcrossAmerica.com is the website. You started in Miami, Jason. Where are you right now? Okay, um, so I am uh, a little bit outside of Opelousas, Louisiana, closing in on the Texas border. Oh boy! So we're how getting f- close? How far from Austin? Uh, I'm far from Austin. <laughs> I'm about 380 miles from Austin right probably, now. Probably you're gonna um, have to you're gonna have to get trucked in there, huh? Because you're probably not gonna be able to I, run. I'm that gonna far. have. To, I think I'm gonna have to bus in there. Yeah, yeah. Some some storm. I won't make any excuses. I, I didn't I didn't get as far as I thought uh, I I thought I would, but uh, but I did cross the thousandth mile today. I ran my thousandth awesome. mile today. So, yeah, so you're uh, running across America, awesome. BitcoinAcrossAmerica.com, and uh, what's the point for our listeners that are just now tuned in? Uh, we got a lot of Saturday, Saturday night radio listeners that may not have heard your original uh, interview. Can you sum, sum it up for us? Yeah, um, so I'm running from uh, from Miami Beach to San Francisco um, to raise awareness for the homeless epidemic in America and for Bitcoin. A lot of people don't realize um, how bad the homeless situation is here. We've got any given night, we've got 1.6 million Americans without a roof over their head, and it, in the course of a year, we'll have 3.5 million Americans that will experience homeless homelessness, and and that's just ridiculous. I don't think we're you know we're not compassionate as a people. I just think that a lot of people don't understand and don't realize how bad the problem is. So And they also um, don't know that there's so many different types of homelessness. I mean, there's people that sure. are uh, you know the out of work and you know their family sleeping in the car together. I I you know I we went in New York City, and I saw a couple just laid out uh, with blankets and everything right on the street. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, this isn't always a situation of somebody who refuses to work or a situation where somebody who's, you know, mentally ill can't work or something like that. 
Oh, yeah, for sure. A lot of times, you know, people don't realize how close any one of us is to being homeless. I mean, most people are a missed paycheck or a major life tragedy away from being in the street, you know. All it takes is a divorce or an illness to to really kill your safety net and and put you out in in the street. So so we try to have compassion for that and also just sort of, you know, raise awareness for what's going on out there. Uh, And, of course, we raise awareness for Bitcoin because we think, you know, Bitcoin's going to fix a lot of the problems with the economy, and I think our systemic bleeding economy is one of the problems why we have so many homeless people. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of issues with quantitative easing and, you know, with, uh, with an unfree market. And I think that Bitcoin's going to solve a lot of that. So I think the, the two go, go great together, like peanut butter and jelly. Cool. So I know last time we had you on, uh, you had mentioned that you were going to do more promoting of Bitcoin or asking about Bitcoin when you would like stop off at a convenience store or something like that. Have you been doing that? I have. I have done it absolutely every day, regardless of where I went. Um, even if I went into a chain restaurant or something to eat, like mm-hmm. I always ask them if they take Bitcoin now. Um, the only taker I've got is I got um, my petty cab driver in downtown New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, to take Bitcoin. And he Sweet. didn't even have a wallet or anything. He was just, I got him set up with a mycelium wallet, and he was super excited. And they put pictures up on the Facebook page of it, and it was it was really cool. And then today I had a really cool experience where I woke up, looked out the window, and there was a guy taking a picture of our RV. And I walked out to talk to him, and the guy's like, hey, you know, I, just, I heard about Bitcoin on the Joe Rogan experience. And um, do you know Andreas Antonopoulos? And I was like, <laughs> yeah, I do. And they're like, that's awesome. That guy's fantastic. And this was just in, like, you know, outside of Baton Rouge, Louisiana, just a random guy is an Andreas Antonopoulos fanboy. And I was like, man, you know what? Bitcoin is going to make it. If people in rural Louisiana are who stopping and they know who's, who Andreas is. Who is Andreas Antonopoulos? I don't know. He's, uh, you know, oh. like one of the speakers for, uh, is it blockchain.info? involved there yeah well no well, he's the security he's the security director for blockchain.info but oh, he's cool. also one of the original co-hosts of uh, of let's talk bitcoin he's a bitcoin developer oh. uh, so, and, and he's just one of the most well-spoken people on bitcoin oh great uh, and uh, yeah he's just a great guy all right so, so jason yeah, i've got so, some i've got some critique for you you didn't ask for it but uh, i'm gonna give it to you anyway there's nothing on your website i can't there's no journey photos there's no blog i mean he's on the facebook page i see his stuff all the time oh it's the facebook yeah, yeah, we're working on it. We're, we have a disconnect with what I'm updating content to Facebook, and it's supposed to be making it over to the website. Uh, it's not right now, but that that will be changing here shortly. Okay, so, good, good. Well, I figured so, I, yeah, I figured no. the excuse would be that you're just too damn busy running trying to make it to Austin. You don't have time to do any blogging. I wouldn't blame you if you uh, if you didn't. So I'm glad you're posting updates on Facebook. So would people search for Bitcoin Across America on Facebook to find you? I would search Sean's Outpost. Sean's Outpost. Okay, so and yeah. then hopefully BitcoinAcrossAmerica.com will get connected up with those updates because if you know if I'm I'm promoting a website for you, I want to make sure that there's something there for people to go and and check out. So, so what's the plan here, Jason? Um, you're uh, you've got 370, 380 miles to go to uh, to Austin. There's no way you're going to make it by the time that uh, he's going to bus in. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to know: Are you going to bus back to the point that you uh, previously yes. had left? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. No yeah. cheating here at all. All right. Very good. We'll look forward to seeing you in Austin next week. Jason, thanks for the update tonight. When I would hope we'll uh, be able to have you on in uh, in person for an update. Yeah, that'd be fun. For sure. Thanks, guys. Thanks for the call, man. Appreciate it. More coming up here at 855-453. That's 855-450-3733. You may take control here on the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. There are many things the human body can do very well, but maintaining the proper pH level isn't always one of them. That's where AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops can make a world of difference. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops helps your body do what's natural. Just a few drops a day helps rid your body of harmful waste and acid while promoting health and restoring vibrance and energy. Alkalizing boosts your immune system and can help fight headaches, irritability, cramping, and insomnia. Alkalizing also helps the body fight depression and even bone loss. To learn more, more about the importance of alkalizing and how you can find life-changing and vital balance, please visit AlkaVision's brand new website at AlkaVision.com. Same great products, but now easier to use and more informative than ever before. To get your very own plasma pH drops for just $29.95, call 800-518-7615 or visit AlkaVision.com. That's A-L-K-A-Vision.com. Alkalize your body and supercharge your health at the new AlkaVision.com. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. 
The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way. Love as your guide. And liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidavi. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. You can take control of the airwaves here toll free. And the number is 855 450 free. That's 855 450 3733. This is the live Saturday edition of Free Talk Live. We've got a website. It's freetalklive.com. You can go there and get interactive in a variety of ways. If you have a smartphone and you'd like quick access to our live streams and the podcast, just go to M as in mobile. Dot freetalklive.com to find all that. That's m.freetalklive.com. Uh, nhlibertyforum.com. That was the Liberty Forum. It was great, and it's going to be happening again next year, so we look forward to seeing you there. But it's not your only chance to come to New Hampshire during an amazing uh, weekend, or in this case, what's going to be the next event, is a week-long camping excursion to the northern White Mountains of New Hampshire at the Porcupine Freedom Festival, a.k.a. Porkfest. It's coming up in late June. You can go to porkfest.com, P-O-R-C-F-E-S-T.com. You've heard us talking over and over again about the Free State Project here on Free Talk Live and how important of an idea the Free State Project is. And you've heard us telling the stories about the activism and the activists here and all the wonderful things that are going on, or at least a fraction of them that we're aware of. But you haven't yet come to check it out. The Porcupine Freedom Festival is your opportunity, your next opportunity at least. It's coming up in about, again, four months, and about 1,500 people were in attendance last year. So it's probably three times the size of the Liberty Forum. This is the premier event 
uh, as far as visiting New Hampshire is concerned, and it's going to be awesome. I don't know what's scheduled yet, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what speakers are coming to Porkfest. That, to me, is not the attraction. The attraction is to be with 1,500 liberty-minded people all in the same campground for an entire week. If you can only make it for the weekend, come up for the weekend. You won't be disappointed with the Porcupine Freedom Festival. But the Free State Project, what is it? Well, it's an idea of bringing 20,000 liberty-minded people all to the same geographic area and then having those people get active to achieve liberty in our lifetime. It's possible if we get the numbers together. And right now we've got over 15,000 who are pledged to make the move here to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Over 1,500 are already here. Mark, you and I moved back in 2006, yep. and there are new movers moving up every week here to New Hampshire. Even during the wintertime, people are moving. Mark, I went to a move-in party today uh, that was actually about 20 minutes outside of Keene, a little town called Alstead. There's actually a handful of free staters that are already living in the town, so yep. it's great. There's another one there now. Uh, a couple showed up. They're probably in their maybe their late 40s. They uh, they came into town, and they had a huge U-Haul truck. I mean, a f- full size uh, U-Haul moving truck. I don't know. It's 26 feet or something like that. It's a big truck, and they also had a, a smaller U-Haul truck as well. Man, so loaded, loaded with stuff. Guess how long it took us to unload that truck? Half hour. A, a little bit more. A little bit more. I mean, this was a loaded truck, and both well, trucks. Both I've trucks. seen these. I, I've seen these move-in parties. Yeah. Both trucks were unloaded. It in, takes a day to load these trucks for the yes. people when they move wherever they move from, and it takes a half an hour to unload them. It took about probably fifty minutes to unload said truck and get everything inside the house in icy conditions. I mean, this wasn't exactly the easiest move-in uh, party that we've ever done. And, of course, they uh, supplied pizza and other goodies and beers and things like that. And people got to hang around afterwards and kind Beer. of get, get to know each other, uh, which is great. So let me give you the numbers, not just the 50-minute numbers, but there were 30 adults who showed up to this party, seven kids. Now, actually, about 20 of us were really the core movers because the other 10 showed up late. You don't want to show up late to a move-in party in New Hampshire because all the work will have pretty much been done. There were probably about 8 or 10 people who showed up within the last 10 or 15 minutes, and there was literally almost nothing left for them to do uh, at that point. This is one of the things you can expect to happen when you make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project. Where else does this happen? I don't know. I've never heard of anything like it Not before. Not too many places. It's an amazing community of people. The The folks who were moving in, they had visited, so I had met them previously. They came to Keene, uh, and they, you know, we went out to uh, the buffet with them here in town and, you know, enjoyed uh, their company. So, we'd, you know, they'd visited actually a couple of times. And so a couple of us, you know, some of us knew them from their visits, but the majority of the people who showed up, they'd never even met before. They were complete strangers who were helping them move their stuff into their home. And then afterwards, you kind of you kind of start to get to know people. You introduce one another afterwards during the, the food portion of it. But it's just an incredible community of people who come together to help each other out and help make the process of moving, which is a real hassle and a real frustration and stressor for, for people, help make the process, at least the ending part of the move, the unloading part, to make that really easy in comparison to what it would be. I mean, there was a lot of stuff in this truck, and we were all able to just clear that out no problem. It's just an incredible group of folks. You really, if you love liberty, you really owe it to yourself to check out the Free State Project. This is real. This is not some sort of teaser. This isn't an idea of something happening in the future. It's happening today. People are moving now. But again, right now it's early movers. So the Free State Project goal is to reach 20,000. We haven't reached that goal yet. We're at over 15,000. Once the 20,000 goal is reached, there will be a a five-year window of time in which more moves will happen. Thousands more will move. And then how often we'll be having these moving parties, I don't know, because we're having them statewide at least fairly, fairly often now. So what it'll what it'll be like in that five year window of time when the bulk of the Free State Project movers show up? We're going to be moving people in every weekend. It's almost happening now, and it's fun. It's a, it's really a lot of fun. So uh, let's go to the phones here. Chris is in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live, listening to WHUB. Chris in Tennessee. Uh, Mark, Ian. Hey, Chris. Uh, good talk to you guys. Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Uh, I've been waiting for some time. 
to ask you this question. Okay. Um, since there have been so many states uh, that have legalized the use of uh, marijuana in one form or the other, um, how would this affect uh, the the federal law mandate that, you know, there is a specific amount that they determine is a felony. And once you determine that you have committed a felonious crime, then you can no longer have uh, firearms. Mm -hmm. And I would like for you guys to address that if uh, you could. So I'm I'm not sure if I'm clear on your question. Your question is some states have uh, legalized marijuana, but you believe that there is a felony possession charge at the federal government level? There is a felony possession, uh, at least in the state of Tennessee. Right. Uh, there's a felony possession level in uh, the most one of the most recent states in Colorado, and therefore, if you are caught with a an amount that in the federal terms that there that you are, you know, it's a felonious uh, level of possession that you can no longer have a firearm. Are you asking, uh, Mark, maybe you're understanding him better, but uh, are you asking me if you are in Colorado and you are uh, a felon I'm from Tennessee? Asking, huh? I'm, I'm asking you in general I, uh, what your opinion is. Well, I don't think that marijuana should be a criminal charge. I, I don't understand your question. Can you try it one more time for me? Maybe rephrase it? Okay, we'll try it one more time. Thank you. Um, the government, which of course we're not all really happy with, but as we have to, you know, live our lives under it, uh, criminalizes marijuana as a narcotic. Yeah, S some governments. Okay. Once you have a certain amount. You'll get a felony it charge. Turns, I got you. It turns from... In Florida, an ounce of pot is, uh, last I checked, a felony charge. I got you. Well, but it, it, you know, after a certain amount, depends on where you're at, I guess. Um, yep. It turns from misdemeanor to felony. That's correct. I follow you so far. Okay. Now, um, how do you think that infringes upon the... Second Amendment. Oh, it totally, infring it totally infringes upon it. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. Uh, thanks for the call, Chris. I appreciate it. More on the way. Did you know that a Nobel Prize was awarded for a medical discovery that improves your sexual performance? It's true. Nitric oxide was discovered to improve your sexual performance. It also miraculously improves your heart health, blood pressure, energy levels, your immune system, diabetes, arthritis pain, even your memory and mood. That's why millions of men and women have begun taking nitric oxide boosters as daily supplements. And right now, we're releasing free bottles of peak nitric oxide so you can discover the benefits for yourself. Be one of the first 100 calls at 1-800-941-9498. After extensive research and clinical tests, nitric oxide has been described as the miracle molecule of the 21st century. Taken once a day, you'll not only begin feeling years younger, but we'll also send you free test strips to prove it works. Discover how to get your free bottle of peak nitric oxide and free test strips at 1-800-941-9498. Be one of the first 100 callers. 1-800-941-9498. This alert just came in. This special announcement is for business owners and leaders of organizations who've been waiting for the right time to build. General Steel has made it impossible to wait any longer with rock bottom prices that could save you thousands. That's right. General Steel, America's leader in pre-engineered structures, is offering buildings at prices you will never see again. Don't miss these prices. A 50 by 100 for under $30,000. You heard right. That's 5,000 square feet under $30,000. Manufacturers, if you need a larger building, try a 100 by 100 commercial building for $129,000. You can't afford to rent with these prices. Imagine a 70 by 
multi 100 foot church building for under $69,000. With the economy improving and interest rates still at historic lows, you can't afford to wait. So call 866 91 Steel. Lock in your price now. Take delivery in spring. 866 91 Steel. That's 866 917 8335. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. Immigrating to the Shire was easy. I was instantly plugged into a community of individuals who also care about peace, liberty, and justice and are willing to do something about it. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. Imagine for a moment a radio program, the most personal of mediums that reaches hundreds of thousands of people on more than 140 radio stations across the U.S. and around the world through the Internet with podcasts and live streams. Imagine the advertising is affordable from $600 to $6,000 a month. Free Talk Live is that program. We will work with you to get clicks, calls, views, or sales. Email me at mark at freetalklive.com. You can interact with other LRN listeners in our message board at forum.lrn.fm. That's forum.lrn.fm. Hey, you. Free Talk Live. Moments remain here at 855-450. Free. That's the toll-free number, 855-450-3733. And just enough time for you if you want to get your call in right now. You can also connect with us on Skype. Our Skype username is lrn.fm, so feel free to reach out that way. Uh, in our last moments of the, the previous segment, the caller finally kind of got his question out about uh, you know what felony charges for marijuana. What were our thoughts about that? And I think it's terrible. I think that uh, somebody who possesses a plant should not be charged with a felony under any circumstance whatsoever. Yeah, but when you start looking at the number of people who have been arrested, we, we did a story recently that said that about 40% of males under the age of 23 have been arrested in this country. I think it was 40 to, 40, 40 to 50, depending on their color. And when you start, you know, this is the arrest, of course, then there's, uh, you know, which what was the arrest for, whether it was a felony or that kind of thing. And... The question is, is this is this a backdoor method of circumventing the Second Amendment? Now, mm. the Second Amendment says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Unless you get caught with a plant. It doesn't, well, it doesn't say anything about any felonies. And yeah. it wasn't until 1968, most people listening to me, many of the people listening to me right now were born when it was legal for felons to possess a gun. And, you know... It wasn't that big of a deal. The crime crime rate, incarceration rates, didn't spike at that you know at that time. It's currently legal for felons to possess uh, in many in most states black powder pistols. Hmm. Now here's one thing you don't see: people robbing convenience stores with black powder pistols. How is it that a felon can legally possess a firearm and then they don't use it to rob someplace? Well, that's because felons that want to rob someplace don't give a flying flip at a rolling donut what you care what about them possessing a gun or not. Mm -hmm. They're going to do what they want. They're going to do what they want. So you haven't successfully prevented anything from what I can tell. 
is all you do, it's it, the same rule that says that when you outlaw guns, only outlaws will have guns. The same thing applies to felons. When you outlaw felons having guns, only the outlaw felons will have guns. I am a convicted felon. It wasn't for marijuana. It was for a very terrible crime. But, you know, I happen to have not committed the crime. I got released by the floor, by a ruling from the Florida Supreme Court, but I never took it back to trial because I didn't care. I, it didn't matter to me whether or not I, you know, took it back. And the only difference it made is I can't vote in the state of Florida mm -hmm. and I can't possess a gun. Okay, that's fine. But you're, you, I mean, if I want to get a gun, I can go get it tonight. You're not stopping me. All you're doing is leaving, making it so that I can't possess a weapon. Some people really want to possess a weapon to defend their uh, homes and families. Yeah, some people, you live in a fairly undangerous area. There's not even a cop uh, around where you live. Well, I but, also live in New Hampshire, Vermont, and Maine, which are the three right. lowest crime areas in the country, right? Right, right. So a lot of people uh, you know, live in some pretty dangerous areas, and those people should be able to possess whatever weapon they want to to defend themselves. So I, I'm glad that you took this and kind of expanded it to the larger issue of felons and firearms in general. I think that whatever the felony is, people change. People can change over time. And the, the person you were, Mark, you were 17 when you went to, to jail? or somewhere I was around 17 there? when the crime was the committed. The crime happened. You went to jail later. But you were a teenager by the, by the time you went to prison. And uh, you're for, in your 40s now. And you're right. a different person today than if, you were back then. Most people leave prison on probation or parole. If you were to allow a felon to possess a weapon after they got off probation and parole, um, I think that you would probably successfully handle most of the problems that people really are concerned with. Because nobody, very few people will look me in the eye and say, you're just too dangerous to, c yeah. to, control, uh, to have a weapon. I mean, they can't look at me and my you know, six-year-old little boy and my family and my little cabin we live in out in the country. They can't do that and say, yep. Yep, you just can't possess a weapon. You're too dangerous. Well, as soon as you get a gun, Mark, you're going to snap and murder right, your entire right. family. Well, yeah, my family, and then everybody, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, walking down the road, um, you know, getting every house that uh, that comes by. Oh, by the way, that wouldn't work where I live because everybody has guns. Right. <laughs> Try breaking into a house where I live; they will perforate you relatively quickly. As long as they're home, you're probably not going to make right. it out. <laughs> the last thing you want is somebody to be home. Yeah. All right, let's go to the phones. Ronnie is in Tennessee. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Ronnie. Yeah, as long as you guys do us know they're both fags. Oh, really, Ronnie? Wow, where did you learn that? Wow, how long did he wait uh, for that? I know each other ever to throw the tap. What I was that? Even, I couldn't make out what he said there. I don't know if I should have hit the dump button or not. Do you want but... a drink? <laughs> Mark, did you know you were a fag? I'm not a fag, but I don't. I think that's terrible <laughs> You're language. You're a cigarette, Mark. That's, you are a. It's uh, a terrible British language cigarette. to use to describe somebody. Yeah. Like, suppose I was a homosexual. Would that would that do anything? Right. What an awful thing to say. Yeah. You know, we've been getting, uh, I don't know if it was that same guy, but I think it might have been the same guy who called the other night and said the C word on the air mm -hmm. and also uh, called previously. Look, yeah, you know, we hit the dump button when you say bad things. We well, didn't hit it in that case because it well, wasn't. Forget about know, the dump button. Here's a little clue about why you're alone. You're a jerk. You treat people badly. Mm. Now, you can change this any moment you want. But when you use language like that to describe people, nobody's going to want to hang around with you. Mm. If you want to have Maybe friends, some other jerks. You want to have if you want to express the love that you have for humans and you know you've got it, you know you want to reciprocate with people, mm. then what you've got to do is you got to treat them nice, you got to say nice things and then they'll give that to you. When you act like that, you're not going to get it. Now, if, if I'm your only outlet for this, if otherwise in your life you're good and you treat your family and friends with respect and you have lots of these things, well, that's cool. You know, come in and call in and vent on me. We'll dump you. It's cool. <laughs> now, what if you vent without using nasty language, we'll let you stay. You know, I thought about letting him stay longer, but he started getting into this gobbledygook yeah, sort I wasn't, of stuff. Well, I wasn't well, really there's sure. a danger because of the FCC. Yeah. If I if I don't know for sure whether you've said a bad word, I don't want somebody to get a recording and then be able to go back over it. See, he clearly says he uh, the you know mamma jammin uh, you know popsicle tart or whatever it is mm. that he says, and then they give it to the FCC. It's called bad language, and then we put our stations at risk. Can't do it. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, let's see. What were we talking about before the... Felons the in possession man? of uh, uh, yes. weapons? 
felons. So felons should be able to possess whatever weapon they want, in my opinion, well, to defend themselves. And the and other their thing families. is, is if you don't want that, the the, the Second Amendment is uh, is clear. It says the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Yes, I know the Supreme Court has ruled differently than that, but you need to rewrite the rules if you want. Uh, if you want them to not be clear, the, the Constitution was written in a in a way to be abundantly clear to individuals. It was ratified hundreds of years ago, and it needs it needs updating. If you want people not to be able to own nuclear weapons, do you think you can't get two thirds of Congress and three quarters of the states to agree on that? I mean, that seems pretty obvious. But those are arms, and they probably should be limited under a constitutional republic. If you don't want people to have tanks, by the way, you can buy a tank. Um, you know, then you need to uh, to, to limit that out but currently the rules say that the right to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed and as long as you want to pay play american constitution you need to follow by the rules you can't just change it and say sure, well they do they do, they change it all the time they, well but the problem is rules is are not in play it doesn't it doesn't even right that's the problem yeah. that we're not playing american constitution anymore we're playing some other game that nobody can figure out it's the well <laughs> Throughout our entire life, the game has been they do what they want. Right. The game. social contract, sadly, hasn't been written down and I didn't sign it. So at any point, they can change the social contract and the rules and the punishments, and I don't get to have a say in it at all. You know, I uh, just to go back to the, the fags comment a moment ago, I love it when people, the best they've got is a personal attack. That's all you got, man? I mean, we, we're on the air talking about all kinds of different topics and viewpoints, liberty-oriented uh, discussions here on Free Talk Live, and the best that you've got is to call a name? You can't actually pick apart the ideas of freedom. It's well, always the name calling. Ian, he's not calling you a name. He's expressing what's in his soul, and what's in his soul is dirty, upsetting stuff, and we can't do anything about that. Yeah. I mean, it's sad that uh, he, you know, the, the he feels the uh, obligation, you know, somehow to, to go in and share that with hundreds of thousands of people. But this is an opportunity for those people to sort of look at how they react in their lives, and if they do this sort of thing to other people, I guess is the best thing we can well, do. Well, it's not just him, though. I mean, there are certain critics, for instance, of the Free State Project here in Keene. A lot of times, they are constantly using name calling when it comes to their critique. They don't well, have any actual if, critique. If your critique starts out with you're a whatever yeah. <laughs> it is. Your critique stinks. This is what they call an ad hominem against right. the, the man. man. Yeah. And if you're if you're attacking the individual in your critique, then you're really not critiquing very well. You should be talking about ideas. Right. You're not thinking. Big D, big people talk about ideas. So talk about ideas. Little people Crit talk about people. Cr right? Critique the ideas. So uh, you can do it tomorrow night because we're out of time for tonight. And you are always welcome to critique. At, eight, uh, at our toll-free numbers, which we'll give you tomorrow night on the live Sunday edition. Mark will be here for that, and we will look forward to talking to you then. Have a great weekend. It's Free Talk Live. I've been told no in many way? different ways. I give you an order, and you're going to obey it. Who told you can go this way? You can do that, and you have to leave here. You cannot bring Simon to the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, hey, hey. 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 Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't gonna make. Wait, no, now. Wait a minute. Holy oh, crap! Yeah, right. Whoa! Hey! Oh my God! Unbelievable! Why are you running from me? Because you're scared me. What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? You're being served. What is this? Democrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at VictimlessCrimeSpree.com. Do you feel like there's nothing you can do about the inexorable growth of government? I did too, before I heard about the Free State Project. The Free State Project is a project to get 20,000 liberty lovers to move to New Hampshire to have liberty in our lifetimes. Early movers for the FSP are getting elected, involved in their communities, and participating in civil disobedience. Call 888-377-2515 now to learn more about the Free State Project. 888-377-2515 or visit freestateproject.org. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, 
Buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates. Online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, February 28, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,332, silver opened at $21.35, and Bitcoin is trading at $563. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from the 512 Bitcoin Mini Conference and Launch Party, Sunday, March 9th, from 1 until 6 p.m. at Brave New Books. The event features a wallet setup party, a women in Bitcoin panel, and special guest Cody Wilson of Dean's Distributed and Dark Wallet. That's Sunday, March 9th at Brave New Books in Austin. Support also comes from Sovereign BTC, media, marketing, and consulting for the Bitcoin ecosystem, online at SovereignBTC.com. And from Mass Appeal, affordable, high-quality printing, now accepting Bitcoin, online at MassAppealInc.com. The Austin City Council voted unanimously yesterday to continue the fluoridation of Austin's water supply. The vote came after 45 minutes of testimony from community leaders, toxicology experts, and a mother who stated Austin's water gave her daughter dental fluorosis from her consumption of fluoridated water while pregnant. Despite the pleas to end the practice, the council passed the measure after a motion from Councilwoman Laura Morrison and a second from Councilman Bill Spellman. On Sunday, Central Texas Gunworks in Come and Take It Austin will celebrate Texas Independence Day with an open carry rally featuring music, education, and food. Participants are encouraged to bring long guns and pre-1899 black powder revolvers. Central Texas Gunworks will also be unveiling a Bitcoin ATM inside the gun store. Texas Firearms Freedom will hold a training session for those interested in working on constitutional carry through the state legislature. The event begins at 2 p.m. at CTGW off 321 West Ben White Boulevard, Suite 203 in Austin. A government contractor based out of Fort Worth, Texas, has been awarded a $145 million contract from the Department of Homeland Security to build security towers along the border. EFW will be tasked with building fixed towers capable of detecting, tracking, identifying, and classifying suspicious activity along the Arizona-Mexico border. EFW is expected to begin creating the towers later this year. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Dorothy Erminger at Capstar Lending. Dorothy can walk you through the ins and outs of buying a home. Give her a call, 512-343-6494, or apply online at calldorothy.com, NMLS 216624. Support comes from My Magic Mud, available at Brave New Books, or online at mymagicmud.com. And from Brave New Books, online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 28, 2014. Check out the website at thelibertybeat.com. Mt. Gox has filed for bankruptcy protection. The Tokyo-based firm announced the latest move for the troubled Bitcoin exchange Friday. USA Today reports CEO Mark Karpeles, speaking in a Tokyo courtroom, seemed to suggest a hacking attack into the exchange led to the loss of 750,000 Bitcoins from users and an additional 100,000 belonging to the company. Karpeles, in court, issued an apology to Mt. Gox customers, saying he is sorry for the troubles he has caused. The Federal Reserve has no authority to regulate or supervise Bitcoin. The word came Thursday from Federal Reserve Chair Janet Yellen when testifying before the Senate Banking Committee. The Guardian reports she was questioned about the digital currency by Senator Joe Manchin, who on Wednesday wrote to the Fed, the Treasury, and other regulators, warning that Bitcoin is disruptive to our economy and should be regulated. Yellen said there is no intersection between Bitcoin and banks under the Fed's authority, meaning the Fed has no ability to regulate it. The Department of Energy's Oak Ridge National Laboratory has partnered with Cincinnati Incorporated to create a faster 3D printer capable of printing objects larger than the average printer. Oak Ridge National Laboratory hopes to print objects at 200 to 500 times the current average speed and 10 times the average size. ORNL will work with Cincinnati Inc. to adapt a laser-cutting machine to include 3D printing software, 
ORNL has also recently announced a partnership with Local Motors they hope will lead to 3D printing a vehicle. Support for Liberty Beat comes from Liberty Stickers, the world's most dangerous bumper stickers. Online, libertystickers.com. And from growyourowngroceries.org, homegrown food on every table. That's growyourowngroceries.org. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, February 28, 2014.